You're watching Valley Sports, the home of the Tigers, Pistons, and Red Wings. Welcome to downtown Detroit for state championship weekend. The nominee crossed the Mackinac Bridge, arrived here at Ford Field, eyeing a four state championship in school history. Jackson Lumen Christie, a perennial power, looking to win back-to-back -back titles in Division 7. Well, let's flash back to last season. Lumen Christie erased a 12-0 deficit against a dominant Traverse City St. Francis team. They scored 15 unanswered. Herb Brogan, he credits the Titans' success to keeping this thing steady. Well, Lumen Christie's won 10 state championships since 1996. I would call that steady. The MHSAA Football Finals on Valley Sports Detroit are presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers. Hi, everybody, and welcome inside Ford Field. Alongside my partner, John Wangler, I am Johnny Kane. You look at these two high school football programs, and they are steeped in tradition, partner. They sure are. These two schools are used to winning championships. Ten state championships, it's 96 for Jackson Lumen Christie, three for Menominee, and they're used to winning and they like winning and that's why they're back here, Johnny. Yeah. And one of them's gonna win it here today. One name we know we're gonna be calling a bunch today is the all-UP quarterback from Menominee, Trevor Terakoff. How special is this young man? Well, I tell you, it starts with his ultra super competitiveness. He's a dual threat quarterback. You can see his gaudy stats there. He can do it all. He's the leader of that offense. As, as he goes, so goes that offense. But again, the scary thing is he may be better defensively. Yeah, which is impressive. Again, fabulous dual threat guy. Gets it done on the defensive side, and he may be called upon to try to slow down Lumen Christie's talented junior running back, Cadell Williams. 1,500 rushing yards on the season. He's really yeah. the workhorse. He, he really is. He's a strong kid. He's very elusive. And the first thing out of Coach Brogan's mouth, he's tough. And he loves him because he's steady. And he gets it done. He runs behind a great offensive line. And I'll tell you, he does a lot by himself, but he has a little help from the big uglies. The big uglies they are, especially on the outside. Talk to any running back, and he will credit those two guys on the outside. Well, you got the two guys, the two bookend offensive tackles. You got Luke Smith. Uh, as you can see, 77. You got Aiden Pastoriza, uh, 73. Both of them are big, strong, and athletic. And when they need a yard, they go behind one of those two guys. And they also dominate the defensive line. So those two guys really are the like heart and soul of that offensive team. It's going to be a fabulous matchup today. What a way to get it started. The Division 7 state championship game. It will be Menominee against Jackson Lumen Christie, the first of four champions who will be crowned here at Ford Field. And we bring it to you next. special presentation of the MHSAA football finals is brought to you by family heating cooling and electrical family is not just the name of our company but the way we do business by your local Toyota dealer visit buyatoyota.com Toyota let's go places and by the Michigan Achievement Scholarship it's a game changer And we welcome everybody inside Ford Field. There you see Jackson Lumen Christie in the dark green and Vegas gold. John Kane, John Wangler, and the third member of our crew, Lexi Ayala. We check in with Lexi down on the field. Thanks, Johnny. Menominee football plays at the historic Welton Blouch Stadium, one of the most nostalgic high school football stadiums in the state. The concrete grandstands weathered 102 years of Michigan winters. However, this season was the year that the concrete called it quits and the grandstands have been condemned. Only one row was left available for fans in the stands. The solution, head coach Chad Brandt said, was a community effort. People put up portable aluminum bleachers in the end zones for fans, and they even had to relocate a home rivalry game. And even though Menominee may not have ever had a normal high school home game football atmosphere, the one constant was the fans. Always showing up and showing out, especially today, 
when 487 miles lay between their hometown and the UP in Ford Field, you can expect Menominee fans in full attendance. Johnny? Appreciate that, Lexi. That's awesome. And there's a look at head coach Chad Brandt now in his second season with the Maroons. Tremendous human being. You see Menominee wearing the maroon and white playing out of the West Pac Conference. And Menominee did win the toss, and they elect to receive. Andre Salazar kicks it deep. And Isaiah Odom corrals it in the end zone. And Menominee will get the football first here in the Division 7 State Championship game. We just talked about this young man who wears number 11, a fabulous dual threat with 38 combined touchdowns on the season. He can go. He can beat you with his arms, with his legs. Uh, very elusive, very dangerous guy from the quarterback spot. And he's the heart and soul of that offense for the Maroons. Trevor Terkoff could be the Division 7 quarterback of the year. Expect to see Menominee run the football quite a bit today. There's a lineup in the wing formation, and that is Terkoff. He picks up a couple of yards on first down, and we are underway. Pierre Gray with the tackle for Lumen Christie. Let's take a look at this Menominee offense. Again, they got some big fellas up front. They've been rolling along here in the playoffs. They scored 100 points combined in district play wins. There you see Wyatt Cornell, Brennan Swanson, and then the skill position guys. You see Tanner Terkoff, the flanker receiver, the younger brother of Trevor. And a handoff to Landon Bardowski and picks up a couple. And that'll bring up third and long. Bardowski's done a nice job this season too. He's almost a 1,500 yard back and he's their, he's their lead rusher coming out of the backfield and you combine those two, they got a lot of weapons coming out. So third and long. Bardowski in the backfield alongside Terkoff. Now he moves him to the left side of him. Terkoff rolling left. Back to pass. Had his intended receiver right at the sticks. Catch was made by Nathan Comp and tackled by London Hampton, but I believe he's going to be about a half yard short. Now they're going to say incomplete pass. Nice job defensively. They just tried to do an outcut to the short side of the field. The ball was, was delivered. It's got to be thrown to the outside shoulder. Great defensive play coming up and getting that left arm in to knock it down. So it'll be a quick three and out, and Trevor Terkoff back to punt for the Maroons. And he gets it away. Gabe King back to receive it. Bottle the football, and I believe the Maroons have it at the 43-yard line, and they do. Tyler Smith came away with it. It was a 40-yard punt, and Gabe King just had trouble corralling it. Another look at it, Wang. Well, the ball bounces, and it looked like he took his eye off it for a second, and he wanted to start to run. you got to secure that football, and huge break starting out this game for uh, Menominee. And Gabe King, again, talented return man for Jackson Lumen Christie, but the first big break of the ball game goes in favor of the Maroons. Tyler Smith, the senior, able to fall on top of it, and now he will do the snapping responsibilities. As Bardowski in to the right of Terkoff, fakes to Bardowski, Terkoff rolling right, dumps it off, and a dropped pass. He was looking for Isaiah Odom. And let's take a look at the Jackson Lumen Christie defense again. Pastoriza and Luke Smith, they book on the offensive front. They do the same on the defensive side. Talented linebacking crew, Pierre Gray, one of their best tacklers, and Ryan Waliki. And then in the secondary, Pastoriza, that's Alex Pastoriza, Aiden's younger brother. Second and 10. Inside handoff, Bardowski gets through the first line of defense and inside the 30-yard line, and that'll be the Maroons' first first down as Britton Hampton and Pierre Gray combine on the stop. 
gain of 14. Just a quick hitter, direct snap there to Bardowski. He does a nice job at right side, open up a hole. They're trying to get him off the ball quickly. They got some uh, push that offensive line. Huge first down, getting into a red zone. Close to the red zone. First and 10. Ball to 29-yard line. Bardowski with it. Bardowski gets to the edge and down near the 20-yard line. Right near the marker, Alex Pastoriza in on the stop. And there's Herb Brogan, the legendary coach. 44 seasons. How about that? Got his 400th win earlier this year. Absolutely incredible job he's done. There's only four uh, coaches in the history of the state of Michigan who's gotten over 400. And he's in an elite company. And what a tribute. The coach has done it over a lot of decades and a lot of time. Hall of Famer. After a gain of eight, that brings up second and two. The nominee back to the ring formation and some movement on the offensive front. Brennan Swanson. Ball start. That's going to be an offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So we have five-yard penalty. He's going to back up Menominee. So they've been moving in the right direction after getting the turnover on special teams. But you can see Swanson just fell out of his stance. Not happy. It looked like it might have been a pass because he was sitting back yeah. on his hands there. So had him on his heels. I'm sure they're going to re uh, rethink that uh, play call. <laughs> Here we go. Second and seven now. Takes the handoff to Bardowski. Terkoff, plenty of time. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to use his legs. Terkoff down at the 15-yard line. That'll be a first down for Menominee. That's one of the great strengths of Terkoff. Uh, so elusive, and he can beat you with his arm and his legs. That time, it was just a little roll right, a little fake, inside fake. He rolls right. Great coverage there. Uh, Terkoff, smart enough, pulls it down and picks up a good gain with his legs. When Credit the secondary of uh, Lumen Christie, but it was a great job there identifying that and picking up uh, some good yardage inside the red zone. Yeah, picked up seven yards before Aiden Pastoriza finally brought him down. Terkoff, little jet sweep, and not much doing as Caden Bell ridden out of bounds. Very fast defense for Jackson. They pursue very, very well. They've done a great job allowing only seven points a game. And, and that, that, was, that play right there was a good example of how well they pursue, especially when you're going to the short side of the field. So that'll bring up second and nine. The snap it directly to Bardowski. Bardowski looking for a blocker. Terkoff trying to block for him. Now Bardowski cuts back to the inside. Bardowski inside the five-yard line. And that's going to be another first down before Josh Dumont brings him down. A gain of 11. You can see direct snap. Look, at you got Terkoff as a lead blocker. He's trying to get the edge. Bardowski makes a great shallow cut, cuts it inside. That's all athleticism, and as we talked about, you can see why he's gained 1,500 yards this season. Great cut inside. He's running with his shoulders low, picking up that extra yardage, protecting that football inside the uh, red zone. The all-UP running back, Landon Bardowski, first and goal. This time they snap to Terkoff. Terkoff looking left, and good swarm tackling by the Lumen Christie Titan defense. Now to bring up second down, Josh Dumont. The first man in to get him. As Chad Brandt looks on. Again, three and out on the first possession. Get the turnover on special teams. And now they're cooking with grease with a ball on the three-yard line. Direct snap. Bardowski right up the middle. Touchdown. Menominee. Well, Coach said it uh, earlier this week, you know, all the cliches, but you can't turn the ball over in big games, and it was a great break there for uh, Menominee to get down there, and, and they took advantage of it and did a nice job. They mixed it up really well. That time, the nice hole inside between the garden center and uh, Bardowski just drilled it into the end zone. The first score of the ball game comes courtesy 
of the senior captain Landon Bardowski and Menominee lines up to go for two. Trevor Terkoff in at quarterback, the deep man behind him is Isaiah Odom, but Terkoff, he's it into the end zone. He has a receiver caught by Eli Beal, the senior tight end, and the two-point conversion is good. Not, not exactly how they drew it up, Johnny, but I'll tell you, again, when, when you have Terkoff with his uh, mobility, uh, made a great play. Making something out of nothing. A little ingenuity from the senior quarterback, Trevor Terkoff. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Something. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at uh, the geography of these two programs that are battling it out for the Division 7 championship. There's Menominee from the Upper Peninsula, and there is Lumen Christie from Jackson, Michigan. And they meet here at Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Here's Menominee's send-off. Again, they packed a couple of fan buses there down from the UP. Look at the police escort. Oh, yeah. Love to see the passion. That's special, man, that UP power. Again, the only UP representative in the state semis, and of course the only one here in the championship, but this is special stuff. This will be obviously a weekend none of these kids will soon forget. So huge up there, the pride they have in their football, and for them to come down and represent the UP is, is big. So Menominee, eight play, 48 yard scoring drive, capped off by the Bardowski two yard touchdown run. Clayton Miller kicking off for Menominee. And back deep, Gabe King for Lumen Christie. King this time takes it up to the 29 yard line. So some decent starting field position for Lumen Christie. Cole Cooper able to bring down Gabe King. So let's take a look at Lumen Christie. Again, we mentioned 10 state championships since 96. They've got 12 all totaled if you go back to the 70s. I mean, this is special stuff. Again, take a look. I mean, just outside of Ann Arbor, which I know you appreciate Ann Arbor. Very much. Even more so after yesterday, Johnny. <laughs> <Yeah. got it. laughs> I don't want to get into it. But uh, 16 all-time finals appearances. And these two teams met back in 07, back in the Division 5. And the nominee won that football game. But perennial power to the nth degree. And there's a pitch to the right side, Cadell Williams, brought down by Trevor Terkoff. So Cadell Williams, another talented back that you highlighted in our open, and we'll be calling his name all morning long. Very elusive, very tough, very steady. Uh, I'd love to see him start with that toss sweep, start to start the game. But you can see, you're going to see a lot of runs out of uh, Lumen Christie. That's what the coach likes to do, and he's never going to change, and it's been wildly successful. I'd say so. What Herb Brogan tell us this week, he said, we're a run-first offense. Always have been, always will be. That's right. Run! And on. Uh, and they get it to Cadell Williams. Not much running room. Picks up a couple. That's going to bring up third down. What Coach did say was he's using more motion and shifting than he did early in his early years. A lot of that is to try to standardize the defense and see if he can read their keys, see what kind of defense they're going to be in. But, uh, you know, basically he's going to line up with a tight end, a split end, and uh, run the football downhill. He said so once you take away that eye candy, it's pretty much the same offense they've been running going back several years. Yep. Cadell Williams checks out of the ball game, so an obvious passing situation. Isaac Rayberg in the backfield alongside Timmy Crawley. Crawley, back to pass, looking at a man. He's looking for Gabe King, but incomplete, and that's gonna be a three and out for Lumen Christie. Good coverage by Trevor Terkoff, number 11 in white. Here's Gabe King. All Gabe's doing, he's coming down running a deep out. He did a nice job turning that corner. And what happened, though, they dropped they dropped the uh, short safety into that. And that's really what uh, messed that play up for Jackson Newman Christie. Terkoff, good closing speed. Landon Bardowski will be the deep man for Menominee. And punting for Newman Christie. Andrew Salazar, and ball 
kicked out of bounds. It'll be ideal starting field position for Menominee. They'll get it up at about the 43-yard line. 23-yard punt for Salazar. Let's take a look at the profile for these Menominee Maroons. Established all the way back in 1893. You know how they got their name? They said back in the Menominee High School yearbook, back in 1898, they were called the Crimson Heroes, and then they went through a bunch of adaptations. The Red Men, eventually they became known as the Maroons. And as I'm told, I'm sticking to it, that name, nickname has stuck since 1917. It's a keeper. I think it's working well. Not far from Green Bay, Wisconsin as well. A lot of times the nominee, the m, &M game, they'll play some of their neighbors from Wisconsin. Terkoff from the shotgun with time. Looking, Eli Beal, the tight end. First down, Maroons. Terkoff did a nice job that time. All they did, they, they rolled him to the left and then he threw back and the tight end, Beal, did a great job. When he ran that route, he leaned in on the, on the linebacker and then was able to create space and Terkoff delivered the ball on the outside shoulder. Great football play. 21 yard gain on first down. Beal, one of the best pass catching receivers. And also good in the run game as well. Terkoff heaving it well across the field. Did the receiver get his feet in? I believe he did. Nathan Comp. I'll tell you what, Tekov, man, he threw that all the way across Ford Field, and Comp was right there to get it. Only a gain of five, but it looks like he threw it about 35. At least. Very dangerous play, because you're throwing across the field. It kind of hung a little bit, but Comp did a great job laying out. Watch him high point the ball and come down and keep it. A tremendous uh, catch by Comp there. Really was. 6'1", 175 pounds sophomore is Nathan Comp. He stretched out every inch of that frame. Bardowski. Brought down at the 30 yard line. Cassius Griffin in on the stop for Lumen Christie. There's Cassius Griffin, number 23. Second leading tackler for this Titan defense. Menominee's done a nice job mixing it up so far this uh, first quarter. They've kept them off balance. They've thrown the ball. They've run the ball. They're doing a great job uh, keeping that Lumen Christie defense guessing. Ran to the left. Direct snap to Bardowski and a swarm of tacklers from that Lumen Christie Titans defense. Bardowski didn't get much. That's going to bring up fourth down. Cassius Griffin and Alex Pastoriza in on the stop. So what do you do here? It looks like the offense staying out on the field. Ball's at the 29-yard line. Wayne's going to bring up about fourth and three. They're not a big punting team, but when you have a quarterback like Terkoff, you know, he's very dangerous. You get him outside. Uh, they've done it. They've had some success with the tight end. You could probably roll him off a little play action. I could see them going to that play. In formation to the right. Bardowski in the backfield, just to the right of Terkoff. Looks like he's changing the call. Play clock was running down. I don't think they got the timeout called in time. That's going to be a penalty going against Coach Brent. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Looked like they wanted to switch out of whatever they were in after yeah. getting a look at the Lumen Christie defense. Just yeah. didn't have time to get it done. Well, he was automatic. They, they moved some guys around and they switched formations and probably a smart play to call a timeout. You don't want to make a mistake, especially when you're you know, threatening to score here. Uh, you want to make sure you don't waste a play. So it's going to bring up fourth and eight. Ball backed up to the 34 yard line. They haven't been a big punting team, so, you know, and especially with, you know. Out. Menominee. So now They're Menominee calls timeout. So now you got a decision, talk it over. You got a yeah. you know, minute left here in the opening quarter. And again, field position, it's kind of that, that spot in the field you say, I don't know, 34 yard line, but you know, fourth and eight is a lot different from fourth and three. Yep, and he, you know, he trusts his defense uh, for sure. And, and I think, 
It's interesting, though, Johnny, as you look at football throughout the whole country, whether it's NFL or college or high school, uh, coaches are going for it more on fourth down, even some fourth downs that you would have, you know, fourth and five, fourth and six, you know, and it's all odds, right? I mean, if you're fourth and one, fourth and two, the odds are 75, 80 percent that you'll pick it up. But, you know, it's it's how you feel, right? That's it. Times, so. Hey, especially in this house, Dan Campbell's house. Fourth yeah. down, we go. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he's been great. Last <laughs> game was a little tough, but yeah, I know. up until then, they, they've done a great job on fourth down. So, again, when your quarterback is also your punter, that creates, you know, creates some opportunities here as well. It gives you options. Yeah. So, Terkoff back. Looks like they will go. they got trips receiver in a bunch formation at the top of your screen. Terkoff from the shotgun. Back to pass, Terkov, back to throw, he's got Eli Beal inside the 20. Beal will take it to the house. 34 yard touchdown. Great. Great call, and it was set up by that formation. And we'll get a look at it, as you mentioned, it was trips to the, to the short side of the field. And what? So what they did, they put trips to the short side of the field, and they rolled Terkoff to the wide side of the field, and they isolated the tight end, Beal, who's a tough matchup, on a corner. And most corners do not like covering those big tight ends. He did a great job. All he did, he leaned in on that route and broke it out. to the Same route that he ran earlier on this drive. Great job breaking the tackle and took it to the house. Beal, 34-yard touchdown reception. What a gritty and gutsy play call by Coach Brandt. And the nominee now with another two-point try. Terkoff looking for the end zone, looking back for Beal. Stretched out for it, but could not get underneath it. So they will settle for a 14-0 lead over Lumen Christie. Incredible. There's Terkoff. Everything going in his favor right now. 14 nothing Menominee, 311 remaining here in the opening quarter of the Division 7 final. Welcome back to Bally's presentation of the MHSAA D7 Football State Finals. Now Jackson Lumen Christie is in twin territory. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we're seeing double. Head coach Herb Brogan told me that you would never know that Aiden and Alex Pastoriza were twins on his team if you didn't already know the brothers. Now we had to put the two side by side to show you the stark size difference that Coach Brogan's talking about. Aiden has half a foot more of height on him than Alex, six foot seven to six foot one, and Coach Brogan said Aiden, the Cincinnati football commit, also has almost 100 pounds on Alex, the league champion sprinter. Coach Brogan puts it this way. Different types of talents, but both gifted. Johnny. That's good stuff right there. Hey, that's great. Bro. <laughs> I wonder. Hey, I, they gotta have some fun in that household oh, when, they're, sure. when they're wrestling around. And I wouldn't want to be feeding those boys. Other. I wouldn't want to be able to pay for that. No. Pay for those after-school lunches. Gabe King and Cadell Williams back deep for Jackson Lumen Christie, and it is Cadell Williams who takes it up to the 35-yard line, and that's where Lumen Christie will start. Again, phenomenal start for Menominee with a 14-point cushion here in the opening quarter. Bit of a surprise, but again, what we've seen from Lumen Chrissy, well coached. These guys understand what they need to do, and they'll settle in. Well, they've been here, and this is an advantage. I think 10 or 12 of these kids were here last year when they came back from that 12-0 deficit in the fourth quarter to win 15-12. So they're not going to panic. They're going to do what they do. There's a lot of uh, football left to be played. So. It's going to be a great, uh, a great finish here. Hand off to Cadell Williams. Williams greeted by Trevor Terkoff. And he picks up about four yards, maybe three and a half yards before he's brought down. Terkoff in on it. Blake Posh there as well. Trevor uh, Terkoff has made two great defensive plays already. And, and you know, Obviously, offensively, you can see what he can do, but to see him be able to play both sides of the ball, that's a real football player. You can tell by as many helmet stickers as he had. Yeah. I remember when I was playing high school ball, I just begged my coach to be giving me one. Yeah, you know, you don't want to waste, waste any time. <laughs> Goodell Williams off the right side, and Williams into that second level across midfield. 
A big run for a first down for Cadell Williams. Give him 13. Biggest running play of the morning so far for the Lumen Christi Titans. One of the oldest, best plays uh, 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 ever in football. The old toss sweep. They give it to Cadell. They pull the guards. They get out in front of them. The tackles are leading. Student body right. Great job and huge first down to get some momentum here for Lumen Christi. Aaron Brunel in on the stop for the Maroons of Menominee. Ball at the 48-yard line. Hand off to Williams again. Williams, tough running up the middle. Picks up about four yards on first down. Cadell Williams, we talked about 27 rushing touchdowns on the season. 1,500-yard rusher coming in. He's got to earn every bit of it today, Wayne. So we're so left guard, you can see left guard, we're pulling. Here he goes. You got him in front. You got 73 and 77, and he just fouled the big boys. Five carries for 25 yards so far for Cadell Williams. This time they pitch it. Gabe King up the left side, up near the first down marker, and I do believe he has it. So Gabe King on the pitch. 5'8", 165 pound senior, picks up seven yards, and that'll be a first down. Kings are their leading receiver. They usually throw him the football, but that time they just did a quick toss to the wide side. They got some momentum. They got him out there, a quick hitter, and picked up a nice first down. Herb Brogan looks on after having a quick consultation with his quarterback, Timmy Crowley. Right now, Crowley. Ah! Pitches it to Williams. And Williams picks up a couple. So they're not asking Crowley to do too much other than turn around and get it out to our talented tailback. And Williams picks up a couple. Give him four yards. That'll bring up second and long. And Terkoff again in on the stop. As you mentioned, as talented as he is offensively, defensively, this is Iron Man football. He's going both ways. Well, and when you play in Division 7, that's what you have to do. There's usually eight, nine kids playing both ways. and I mean, that's really that's really the way it should be, man. It's great to, to see that. It's great to see this first quarter of action between these two powerhouse schools. But it is Menominee with a two-score lead. But Lumen Christie driving, looking to cut this deficit in half. You're watching the Division 7 State Championship here on Bally Sports. Start of the second quarter here in the Division 7 State Championship game. Let's take a look at the Jackson Community Profile, founded back in 1829. You know, Michigan International Speedway, MIS, they host Nightlights. That's one of the largest drive through holiday light shows. Goes from late November all the way through December. I have family living there in Jackson. Of course, you got the Jackson Coney Island. Been serving Coney dogs since 1914. And you can also take a walk downtown Jackson and visit the amazing murals. They've got bright walls and the mural festival. Jackson hosted for five years, all located within a, about a four block stretch of each other. And you can also view them online at Bright Walls Jackson. Dot com and one of the staples in that community is that man, Herb Brogan, 43 seasons as a head football coach of the Lumen Christie Titans, and he has his team marching downfield. This is their best sustained drive of the day. Isaac Rayberg in the backfield along with Cadell Williams, but they pitch it instead to Gabe King, who reaches back to pass. Oh, he had Charlie Saunders. A little trickery to start quarter number two. King looking for Saunders, but just over the outstretched fingertips. Great call. I love that call. Uh, Gabe King did a nice job. Just overthrew him just a tad, but uh, so they set it up perfectly. You got to give that just a little more air so he could run under it. Give him a chance, to, uh, Saunders a chance to adjust, but great call and, uh, you know, very close. I, I like I like what coach is doing there. I like I like them mixing it up like that. And then 
eight offensive plays to that point on that drive. Seven of them were runs. Here's another run. Cadell Williams looking to get to the outside. Williams makes the first man miss, and Cadell Williams picks up the first down on a tremendous second effort before Blake Posh brought him down. So that's their first first down of the ball game. Gain of 11. Well, here it is again, just a toss sweep. Right now, you're getting the fullback out in front, and, and look at the elusiveness and strength that Williams shows uh, picking up that extra yards. That was individual effort. He took the first hit, did not go down, made a great cut, got back inside. Uh, you could see why he's a 1,500-plus yard rusher and the heart and soul of that offensive running game. Crowley up under center. Hands it off to Isaac Rayberg, and Rayberg down near the 16-yard line, brought down by Trevor Terkoff. That'll bring up second down. Lumen Christie starting to get something going as Timmy Crowley gets the instructions and trots back out onto the field. Again, they don't throw it a lot, but they do trust him throwing the football. 63% passer on the season. And he's thrown Johnny for over 1,000 yards, so, you know, when he has to, he's been very effective. Cadell Williams, lone setback. They pitch it to Williams. Williams, head of steam. Williams, oh, Cadell Williams inside the five-yard line. He'll be brought down inside the one. 16 yards for Cadell Williams. Nothing fancy here. Tanner Terkoff. Brings him down. Here you go. You got motion coming across right there. Here we go. Coach said he was going to use more motion, and that's what he's done. And Cadell Williams pays it off. It was all Williams all the time on this drive for Lumen Christie. And again, that talented junior running back puts Lumen Christie right back into this football game early here in the second quarter. Nothing fancy. Toss sweep. This was just a dive. This was just an isolation for the touchdown. Lead block. You got the guard firing out, uh, hat on hat. Cadell follows his lead blocker into the end zone. Andrew Salazar in for the point after. Good snap, good hold. Good kick, 14-7. The dark green in Vegas gold of Jackson Lewin Christie. They say, okay, let's settle down. Let's take a deep breath. We felt each other out here a little bit here in the first half, and now we're starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. Cadell Williams punches it in from one yard out. And we've got a football game here in Division 7. Yeah, back here at Ford Field, Lumen Christie with the first touchdown of the ball game. Let's take a look at the Menominee Community Profile. Founded back in 1883, located between the Bay of Green Bay and the Menominee River. Fourth largest city in the Upper Peninsula, about 8,400 there. Used to be the largest producer of lumber in America. You can also take a walk on Tourist Beach and visit Menominee North Pier Lighthouse. That lighthouse dating back to 1877. And you can shop and dine at Menominee's historic waterfront downtown. The first street historic district, the first street historic district, I should say, has over 40 commercial buildings right along there on Lake Michigan. Beautiful community. And obviously, a great football program. <laughs> Lots to see. And of course, on Friday nights, that's where you want to be, watching this football team go to work. So great start for Menominee, but Newman Christie with a 10-place, 65-yard scoring drive. Williams, seven carries for 53 yards on that drive alone and the touchdown. That's so important for Newman Christie, Johnny, to answer. You know, you let those guys get ahead in a big game like this, it can get out of hand. But, you know, Newman Christie did exactly what they do. They're steady. They came back. They didn't panic. And back to a one-score game. Andrew Salazar kicks it deep, and Isaiah Odom, Oh, he hands it off to Landon Bardowski on special teams. Not much doing for Bardowski on the far side of the field. 
Credit to special teams coverage by Lumen Christie. Ryan Waliki able to bring him down. And now a message from Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family is not just our name, it's the way we do business. My father chose the name Family Heating because he wanted our company to treat everyone like family. You'll see the difference family makes. I remember talking with Coach Brandt earlier in the week, and you had asked him, you know, you got any wrinkles there on special teams. What did he tell you? Uh, you know? He played a little <laughs> coy, man. I, I'm kind of disappointed, no. you know. You're that, telling uh, me? I mean, you know, I guess you didn't trust him, Johnny. I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, we got to earn that trust. Terkov, quarterback keeper, right up the middle. Terkov lowers the shoulder and lowers the boom up across the 20-yard line up to about the 23. Brought down by Josh Dumont and Pierre Gray. Give him 11 yards on the carry i always enjoy talking with the coaches you know high school coaches on game week you know they got a thousand things going on and of course uh, as we try to get you know our preparation in order see if they have any wrinkles and so it'll be pretty straightforward that ball hits the turf that'll bring up second down but you know both these coaches very gracious with the time and again rogan's been here and done that uh, you know, for Menominee, the program has been here, but for Coach Brent, you know, it's his first time for him, all these players and their coaching staff. But Terkoff took a huge hit there when he released the football. He got up a little slow. He's hurting his hand. I don't know. That's Isaac Rayberg who came in. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's in a little pain, but you know he's not coming out. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, yeah, you can tell him kind of maybe catching his breath right there. Got him right in the midsection. Rayberg's a tough tough guy now he's got team high seven sacks for them play clock is winding down we'll see if they yeah they call time out here to avoid a penalty and there's coach Chad Brandt and again that, you, you don't want to see your quarterback in, no, in any in any offense but particularly this fish for this one he's so competitive I, yeah. great pressure there by Rayburn coming through he lets go of the ball, and, and that's the one thing when you're a quarterback, you're so exposed. When you let letting go of the football, you're, you're open, your ribs, and uh, hopefully he's just got the little wind knocked out of him. But uh, I give him a lot of credit. A lot of guys won't stand in there and take that hit. He'll get happy feet, and they'll get rid of it. And he stand, stood right in there, took the hit, tried to deliver the football. So obviously uh, another example of his toughness. But You know what that play reminded me of yesterday? Late in the game, Ohio State, Michigan, Kyle McCord got hit right when he threw it over the middle. Under a minute to play. Do you remember that play? And, uh, yeah, I saw fa that. Vaguely, Johnny. I vaguely remember that play. But he still Isn't that the one there. where he threw it to the wrong jersey? That was the one right here. But fortunately for Menominee, that one just hit the turf, and that'll be an incomplete pass, and they live really? to play another down. We'll line up again. Let's Let go. that be a lesson to quarterbacks everywhere. <laughs> Hang in there, throw Hang it in there. Throw <laughs> the turf, and line <laughs> up again. That's it. So out of the timeout, let's see if Terkoff able to catch his breath after the big hit from Isaac Rayberg. Terkoff back to pass, dumps it off underneath, and wide open. Tanner Terkoff, the little brother. Tanner up past midfield, and a big play. Out of the timeout, Josh Dumont knocked him out of bounds, but that is a gain of 33 yards. Big play. Great, great call here. Turkoff to Turkoff right here. It's so good. When you bring a tight end like that across the formation, it causes a lot of confusion in the secondary. Great call, open right up. Nice job. Yeah, that was a great play call. Again, caught the Lumen Christie defense napping a bit. We know Tanner Turkoff, the younger brother, got about 400 receiving yards on the season, so he well, he, he can get it done. And he, he's waiting in the winds to take over for his brother. So instead of wasting that great athletic talent, you know, and making him just be the backup, they put him at tight end and catches a huge pass. So after Landon Bardowski had a gain of one, it'll be second and nine. Terkoff, keeper, Terkoff, ridden down past the 40-yard line. Cassius Griffin and Luke Smith in on the tackle. For Lumen Christie. So that's going to bring up third, and we'll call it four. Again, Johnny Kane, John Wangler, Lexi Ayala on the call here for the Division 7 championship game. And 
Coach Chad Brandt wearing that piece of chewing gum out. Approaching eight minutes to play here in the second quarter. Terkoff changing the call. From the shotgun, play pass, Terkoff keeping it himself. Terkoff past the 30. Terkoff down to the 20 yard line. That's the X factor, Johnny, his feet. London Hampton brought him down. Great job of coverage. There was pressure. They did a good job pressuring him. But when you have a quarterback who can just make plays with his feet and those guys, are, those secondary guys are being run off, uh, opens up a lane, especially inside the, uh, you know, 30-yard line. And uh, Turkoff took advantage of it. You mentioned he's got 1,000 yards rushing to go with 1,700 yards passing. And it is first down for the Maroons. From the wing set. Not much doing for Tanner Terkoff. The quarterback in waiting. They might have lost a yard. Little inside trap. They try to bring uh, Tanner across from his wing position. And uh, Lumen Christie was not fooled. They did a good job. They stayed home. Those tackles stayed home and uh, great pursuit. Second and 11. There's Tanner Terkoff. 6'3", 175, good build, just a sophomore. Went out the wing formation. Trevor Terkoff faked the end around, and Terkoff back to the original line of scrimmage. Again, London Hampton, number four for Jackson Lumen Christie, brings him down. He's coming on, they faked the reverse. Terkoff keeps it, and in great pursuit, uh, Great coaching, obviously they did. They were not fooled at all. They've seen that play before. They stayed home, and uh, that's one of the real strength of Lumen Christie is their discipline, they're solid, and they play their positions, and they have great pursuit. And there's London Hampton, the only freshman starter on that Lumen Christie defense. Another good tackle. The nominee one of three on third down, and it is third and long. Terkoff back to pass. Pressure coming. Terkoff rolling to his right. Heaving left. Oh, alone. Eli Beal. Another touchdown for Menominee. 22 yard touchdown pitch and catch. And there was nobody, and I mean nobody close to Eli Beal. But the officials are talking it over. There's uh, sometimes those are the hardest ones to catch when they're so wide open. So a flag comes in. You see Eli Beal. That the official's hat is out of bounds. So the question is, was he, Eli Beal pushed out of bounds? Yep. Or did he, on his own accord, go out of bounds? You can see Beal up here at the top. Right there. So it's just out of frame, and it looks like Wang's. It seemed like the defensive back, once he once he got Beal out of bounds, he just let him go. Yeah. And then exactly Beal came what, back in. That's on exactly the what happened, Johnny. Let's see the call. Illegal touching on the offense. Five yard penalty, loss of down, fourth down. And that's referee Brian Smith from here in Detroit making the call, and that is huge. So wipe off the touchdown, illegal touch. Illegal touch. So now you you've got fourth and a mile. You don't see that one much, that call. I'll, um, it'll be interesting. Now, you can look for Lumen Christie to blitz. They're, they like blitzing on uh, obvious passing downs, and, and this, is, this is one that's coming up. They're going to bring some heat. Yeah, fourth and about 16 yards. And now we've got a timeout on the field. So they're going to take a look at this. They're going to review it. And again, still a little bit of confusion on the field. You can see Trevor Terkoff and Eli Beal. That's the universal signal for touchdown. Yeah. And Coach Brandt right now. They're both pleading their cases. So there's no question. <laughs> oh, this is big time. So I do believe they are going to review it. Replay official, replay assistant can review plays 
from a booth in the press box. They're going to take a look at our replays. But again, we don't have a great angle of it. Again, the playing question, top of the screen, and these guys run out of frame. Yeah. So these would be the same views that this officiating crew will look at. And so the question is. The inconclusive evidence. I don't, I, yeah, it's tough. Was Beal pushed out of bounds? And did he make a direct line to get back into the field of play? Yeah. Again, tough jobs for these officiating crews, again, in, in any level of sport, in any game. And again, you want to make sure we're getting the calls right. That's the first and foremost. You want every game, especially a game of, in a game of this magnitude yeah. and a call of this magnitude. And you never want uh, officials to decide a game. You know, you got to let the kids decide. And this is a after be interesting. The, after the review, the ruling on the field stands. It will be fourth down. So Menominee backed up to fourth and 16. No TD call stands, so says Brian Smith. And now, remember last time they faced a fourth down, and uh, they got a touchdown. They got a great, deal. yeah, it was a great call. I've been very impressed with uh, Coach Brandt's play calling today. He's done a great job mixing it up. He's been creative, and uh, we're looking for, we got trips to the left, and we got an isolation up on the top of the screen. Terkoff back to pass, goes to the top, and that ball is picked off, but a flag comes in. Ball is intercepted by Britton Hampton, number three for Lumen Christie, but was there contact before he got to the intended receiver? It would appear so. Yeah, they were chicken fighting out there, and uh, they're probably going to call it here. On, if you look right up here, there's a little fighting going on. That's more than chicken fighting, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was right in front of the. It was right in front of the. It was right in front of the official too. Assessed half the distance. It will remain fourth down. It, it's in, you know it's interesting. They're, they've been going after uh, Hampton. They like that matchup with Beelon Hampton, and they've been going after it here, you know, for the whole first half. And uh, that time, uh, Beal won again. Well, keep in mind now, high school rules. That's not an automatic first down. Correct. So they get the penalty, yep. and they'll get the penalty yardage. So now you've got fourth down in management. We go from fourth and 16 to now to about fourth and a long two yeah. or three. We call it fourth and two. So now you got now the playbook opens up. Yeah. And if they were if they wanted to kick, they had a better opportunity to kick a field goal. But they're they're going for it. Landon Bardowski in the backfield with Trevor Terkoff. Wing formation, they give it to Terkoff, rolling to his right, Terkoff, he gets near the sticks, but Lumen Christie says he didn't get there. Antoine Baker, big number 58. Second big play, Baker had great pursuit there, coming from the linebacker position. They, tr they tried to run Terkoff just to the short side of the field. They got some people in front of him. But Baker did a great job, and again, that pursuit, he's made two huge plays this, this first half already, all over the field. Baker got there, Cassius Griffin got there, Britton Hampton got there. Little Christie feeling itself. Now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Welcome back inside Ford Field for the MHSAA's Football Finals D7 on Valley Sports Detroit, presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Now, Menominee making it to the state finals, that's nothing new for the program or the community. However, for Menominee's current players and head coach Chad Brandt, the trip to Ford Field is a first. And coach Brandt told me this is a huge expense for us. You're talking over 900 mile round trip on the buses, sleeping 50 plus people in hotel rooms and feeding them. They couldn't have done it without the community's financial support. He said he couldn't be more appreciative. But what Coach Brandt couldn't be more proud of is the players taking upon themselves to fundraise as well. There's a firefighters group that does a fill the boot campaign in Menominee. So some of his players were inspired by that, put a spin on it, coining their fundraiser, the fill the helmet campaign. In small communities like Menominee and the UP, everyone plays a role in forging a way to Ford Field. Terrific story, Lex. Special moment, love and support they get from the UP is something these Menominee Maroons 
Hold high, no question. They were just turned away. Oh, Cadell Williams answering for Jackson Lumen Christie. So Lumen Christie defense gets the stop on fourth and short, and now they come right back, hit him in the mouth with Cadell Williams. Nothing like that momentum, nothing fancy. Just a little off tackle to the left. Look at the hole, they all block down. They follow big Luke Smith down there, and Cadell does the rest, ripping through there, and uh, they're fortunate he didn't pop it for the big one, but uh, huge first down to get out of the uh, inside the, their own uh, territory there. Yeah, deep inside, a 27-yard gain. Andrew Salazar helping to pave the way as well. This time, inside handoff, and Isaac Rayberg Normally a short yardage back, but they get the inside handoff and Rayburn picks up another first down give him 12 yards They run they love running Isaac Rayburg on the trap. He's their, their fullback guy. He's their lead blocker He's their tough guy short yardage touchdowns. He's a great trap runner and that was evidence right there Newman Christie past midfield Approaching four minutes to play in the first half Crowley, pitch to Williams. Williams! Tripped up at the 45-yard line, Aaron Brunel. The senior for Menominee, able to make the stop. Tough to bring him down with just one man, but Brunel did a nice job. He did a great job. Uh, they were very fortunate uh, that he kind of had one-arm tackle there, shoestring tackle, because he had a nice running lane there. That's all he needed. Aaron Brunel brings up now second and seven for Lumen Christie. They like getting that motion guy as a lead blocker. They've been doing that a lot this, uh, this morning. Crowley, and off Williams. Huge hole, Cadell Williams! Williams up the sideline, and he's in for the touchdown. 45 yards to pay dirt. Watch our fullback there. He just had the ball. Here we go. Watch him. Here we go. He's going to lead him through. Nothing fancy. Big block. Great shallow cut there by Williams. But it all starts. They just had on hat. The fullback uh, isolation. And uh, that football's been around a long time. And they executed very, very well. Extra point is up and through. And we are tied. Cadell Williams. Man, this guy, once he gets going, he is tough to stop. He doesn't need much either, Johnny. And those those uh, those secondary guys uh, are not excited about bringing him down. They got to come up, and he's got a four at his speed. Say that again. Coming off a three-touchdown win in the semifinal game against Millington. And again, good blocking, as you mentioned, from Isaac Rayberg and Maverick Stergakis. Charlie Saunders on a tight end position did a good job. Yeah, when you got your when you got your receivers stock blocking like that, doing a great job, uh, that says a lot. And that's what they do. And, and he did a great job coming down and laying out. Gabe King, he's known for his returns, he's known for his reverses, he's known for all that. But he blocks as a, as a wide receiver. And that says a lot, because a lot of the wide receivers, it's sometimes it's tough to get the, the guys to block, but that's all part of the system that Coach Brogan's been running for years. Four plays, 88 yards, only took two minutes and three seconds to tie this football game up. Williams with 45 yards and a touchdown. He's got 133 yards and two scores in this football game. The kick is away, and that ball goes out of bounds, and that'll be... Even better starting field position for the Menominee Maroons who head back out. Coming up at the half, Bear Lake head football coach Sam Mullet tells us why it was so important to bring her NFL coaching experience back to her hometown. We'll also preview the upcoming Division Three state final between Grand Rapids, Forest Hill Central, and Mason. Plus, John Wangler now will break down the first half and the stars are shining bright just like we thought they would. Yes, we did. 
How about this stat from our uh, great statistician, Mike Bratta? Jackson Lumen Christie, 15 runs, 157 yards, two TDs, but they're averaging 10.5 a carry. Incredible. They're averaging a first down a carry. I saw Bratta, he went behind my back to give you that stat. That's how I know he likes you more. <laughs> Sneaky. Uh, Terkoff picks up nine on first down. Mike Bratta, best in the business. We're grateful to have him up in the booth alongside Greg Schultz, our spotter. It's a big afternoon. We got an A-list crew all helping us out. Lisa Dipka taking care of it up here as our stage manager. The dream team. We dream got the team. dream team. Well, it's a lot of fun. And again, we, we figured this Division 7 game was going to be special, and it has been so far. We still got another half of football. We'll see what Menominee is able to do. If they can answer the call after the quick touchdown from Newman Christie, Bardowski is wrapped up immediately by Pierre Gray, the leading tackler for that Lumen Christie defense. He's a leading tackler. He's the emotional leader. He uh, He's all over the field. If, if you see him, man, he fills. He's a heck of a – he's all over the field. And he, make, he just makes plays. He was not fooled. You could tell they're very well coached because they they read their keys okay and they and they attack and they and they close very very quickly and that's one of the strengths they've said all year that they have great pursuit great closing speed Terkoff here comes pressure Terkoff lucky to get it away and just has to throw it out of bounds he threw it in the vicinity of Eli Beal but Isaac Rayberg they're bringing pressure on Trevor Terkoff again Rayberg coming up from that Defensive tackle spot, second time he's gotten great pressure. First time he was able to get to Terkoff and uh, knock the wind out of him. This time able to force the errant throw, and that'll bring up second and long. Well, the best defense for a quarterback uh, is as versatile as uh, Terkoff is that you got to make him uncomfortable if you can. you got to make him uh, not set his feet. you got to hope that he can throw off his back foot. you got to put pressure on him, and that's what they're doing. Play clock down to three, and Menominee is going to call timeout. And that'll be the final timeout of the first half used by timeout. Coach Menominee. Chad Brent. So they want to make sure they get this going here. They can, If they do this right, they could bleed clock and get it all the way down and perhaps get a score to put them up heading into the break. And again, after the way this game started, the 14-0 lead, what you don't want to do is have a three and out here and have Lumen Christie have a chance to yeah. give them the lead. Because it's been a game of momentum, right? You know, Menominee gets off early, 14-0. Uh, Lumen Christie answers. It's it's a back and forth. It's a heavyweight fight. And we're ringside, partner. Mm -hmm. Teams, players, and coaches work hard all week getting ready for the game. So do the officials. Local officials' meetings across the state every week help the men and women calling the action stay on top of their game. Let's give them the respect they deserve. Better yet, why don't you become one? Visit the MHSAA website for more information. There's help wanted. Just whistle. And a great crew here working this one today. Brian Smith, Joe Conway, Anthony Taco, Paul Bames, Sean Williams, Steve Youngblood, and Robert Conway. Appreciate the work that those guys are doing. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a good crew. There's a couple exceptions. Conway, good friend of mine. I, you know. <laughs> But, uh, no, we love you, boss. <laughs> Terkoff back to pass. Got his receiver, younger brother, Tanner Terkoff. And that's going to be close to a first down, but I believe about a yard short. Ryan Waliki in on the stop. Number 13 in green. Take another look at it. Here it is, just leaking him out. Uh, Tanner Conway, nice. they've got the ball to him. They try to get him in the flat. And they release him at, from different points on the field, from the wing, from the tight end position. That time they were able to leak him out and, and they have a nice catch. So that'll bring up third and one. Again, that bunch wing formation. Direct snap goes to Bardowski, and he will pick up the first down. 
One of the things Coach Brandt said about Bardowski, he said he plays mad. He goes, he just has a passion for competing. He's tough. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's run for almost 1,500 yards, and, and he's just, he loves getting in there and mixing it up. And he's really a, a guy that the other players feed off of because of his passion and his emotion. Goes 5'9", 180 pounds. He's back there. Once again, to the right of Terkoff. Motion from Tanner Terkoff, and it is Trevor rolling, throwing, and out of bounds. That'll be incomplete. He was looking for his kid brother one more time. Pierre Gray bringing pressure against the quarterback, Trevor Terkoff. And good coverage from Josh Dumont downfield. You saw there, number five in green. Yeah, Dumont did a good job, especially, you know, they run that. It was a wheel route there where uh, he, he, he ran the out cut, and then he rolled up field, and you can get tricked on that, and that time Dumont did a good job. Second and 10, clock at 111. Play clock again, down to three, down to two. They get it off. Terkoff pressure coming. Comes back to this side, Eli Beal, but brought down a great job by Britton Hampton to bring him down after a short game. Pierre Gray again bringing Ter pressure on Trevor Terkoff. Terkoff very fortunate to get that ball out. They were setting up, it was, it was almost a screen. It was like just a really a little delay and uh, great job defensively by Lumen Christie. They were not fooled at all and they reacted, came up, made a good play there by Britton. Seven tackles already for that young man, Britton Hampton, from his defensive back position. Third and long. Terkoff rolling right. Throw in! And nearly picked off by Alex Pastoriza. Number 14. And that'll bring up fourth and eight. Pastoriza did a great job. Watch him close on the fall, that ball there. Almost come up with a huge pick. The one thing that you have to do as a receiver is you have to buy some field. So he should have, he should have lined up a little tighter and, and took him inside, made a move inside, and then broke it out. But he gave it. You could see the great closing speed of Pastoriza getting that football. One of two on fourth down. This is fourth and eight. We're inside 30 seconds to play in the half. Play clock at two. Play clock at one, they get it off. Terkoff, pump fake once, looking for Tanner Terkoff, and he is wrapped up immediately by Pierre Gray, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Pierre Gray, their most solid linebacker, top to bottom. He's been bringing pressure against the quarterback, and that time good in coverage, but there is a flag on the field. Hold the phone. Herb Brogan with the stoic look, and here's Brian Smith with the announcement. There is no foul for an eligible player downfield. The ball was caught at the line of scrimmage. However, the penalty is declined. It will be first down, Jackson and Christie. Well stated. So now with 20 seconds left, let me ask you, Wangs, if you're Coach Brogan, take a look at this the play in question one more time. Hey, Green. Hey, pull. Pull We've only four. We only have four. So there was Pierre Gray again. Gray was all over Pierre. the field. Number nine, as we said, he's bringing pressure. And for him to get from the linebacker position out to the flat to make a play on a tight end, that shows his great athleticism. He has been nothing short of spectacular this first half. All right, here's my question. Ball's at the 40-yard line. You got 20 seconds. You got all your timeouts. You take a shot here, or you say, I feel good, 14-14. Let's get to the break. Um, no, guessing the history of Coach Brogan, <laughs> yeah. I think they're going to run the football. Now, if they get a big – now, if they can get to the 40 and he gets a, breaks a big run, they may take a shot. But I don't think they're going to take a shot from here. First and ten. Now, as soon as I say that, they're going to yeah, throw so, a bomb. Well, that's what I said. Put they, you on the spot. They got a single. They got a single receiver up yeah. top and play action to uh, Williams and throw it deep. And they go right up the middle. Isaac Rayberg picks up first down. And now they'll use a timeout. So they get past midfield. Big chunk yardage. Only took five seconds. And now they're 12 yards closer. 
Rayburg's their inside guy. He's a lead blocker and he's their trap guy. They love running the trap. Here it is. He just pulled big 61. Rayburg runs right off his uh, butt. That's Andrew Salazar. He did a nice job opening that hole. And those quick hitting traps are very tough to defend. And Rayburg runs it very, very well. well. You mentioned Andrew Salazar, big number 61. He's also the big kicker. So should they get within, you know, within range for Salazar, uh, that presents an option. Yep. Should they do that again? They don't kick a ton of field goals. They hadn't had to really no. this year, but in a game like this, you're able to steal a couple points, and uh, with time working against, you still have two timeouts here. So I think the entire playbook would still be open. Yeah, I agree, Johnny. And the other thing too is when when you play inside, you know that's a different deal for kicking. So the options are you're not battling any wind. You know you got perfect conditions, so that does open up the playbook and gives them another option if they can get another 20 yards. Ball will be placed at the 48-yard line. There's Timmy Crowley, junior quarterback. He will line up in shotgun. Isaac Rayberg to his left. Cadell Williams lines up in the receiver position down at the near side of the screen. Crowley looking at the high side of the screen. Crowley throwing into double coverage. And incomplete. He was looking for Britton Hampton. Got to bring up second and ten. Nine seconds remaining here in the first half. And Hampton stays in the ball game. Obviously playing well on the defensive side. Yep, he's done a good Leading job. Leading tackler in this game in coverage. Stay with the guards. Quick hitch. Cadell Williams. Williams. Down near the 30-yard line, got to get down so they can call timeout, and they do with two seconds remaining in the half. So now you've got decision time. Aaron Brunel in on the stop. Cadell Williams with that quick pitch ends up picking up 18 yards, pick up a first down. Nice job. You, you can see the versatility of, of Williams. They lined him up outside. He's usually in the backfield. He makes a nice catch, a nice cut inside. He got him the football and made a huge play. He's going to give an opportunity to get some points on the board. It, it always helps when you're running back, uh, your star running back has the versatility to be able to make a catch and play the wide receiver position. Just shows his athleticism. And good swarm tackling by Menominee. Again, situations like that, you say, look, we got to make sure we pursue the football, but let's not get beat deep. And they'll give him the underneath stuff. But now, with two seconds left, looks like he's going to bring the offense right back out on the field. Again, Salazar, number 61, is their kicker. Yeah. But uh, also plays up front. Looks like he's going to put himself in a position, line up on the line, as opposed to line up to kick it through the wickets. Yeah, I think, uh, I think for maybe, they may be a little trickery on this one. Uh, Let's see it. Let's see what Herb Brogan. I don't think he's just going to throw it up in the end zone, Johnny. I think they're going to come up with okay. something clever. Isaac Rayburg in the backfield alongside Timmy Crowley. they got Cadell Williams on the high side of the yeah. screen. Twin receivers to the near side. Crowley looking to the high side. Cadell Williams double cover. Yeah. That ball is picked off in the end zone. Now they're going to say incomplete. But nice job by Dawson Bardowski, number 12 for Menominee. They defended it well, and they avoid the nice, negative play. Nice job. You put your best uh, player out there, give him a shot, throw the ball out. Bardowski making a great effort. Oh, my gosh. Almost came down with that. They were not fooled at all. They double teamed Williams, and they, they locked it down. So great first half, back and forth, and uh, we're going to have a heavyweight uh, finish to this one, Johnny. I think so. We talk about the Terkoff brothers a bunch. How about the Bardowski brothers as well? Let's send it down. To Lexi Ayala. Coach, with this one tied up at 14, where do you think you can find the edge come the second half? Well, I mean, we obviously played a much better second quarter than we did the first quarter. Just have it eliminate mistakes like the fumble. Just keep playing. Uh, 11's off the dynamic. We've got to play defense. Got to contain him. How do you think your experience in being here so many times can help when it's close games like this? Well, we've been here before, but so have they. You know, I think our kids are going to come out and play a good second half. Good luck second half. Thanks, Coach. Johnny? Herb Brogan, he's done a few sideline reports in his day, huh? 
Yes, he has. And he's got his football team back in this one. And again, they're getting it done on the ground. You saw Gabe King, Maroon's getting it done, Cadell Williams getting it done. Again, stars shining bright. A couple of tear coughs and a couple of touchdowns from Cadell Williams, and we got a tie ball game. Coming up, the Division Three state championship game featuring the Rangers of Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central and the Bulldogs of Mason. This game will be moving over to Valley Sports Extra, kicked off, scheduled for shortly after 12.30 p.m. over on Valley Sports Detroit Extra and the Valley Sports app. And don't go anywhere because we have a wonderful women empowerment story coming up for you about head coach Sam Mullet soon. MHSAA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit are brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. And by the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. This season, Sam Mullet became the first female head coach in MHSAA history, but she's not new to football. The Bear Lake coach gained national attention after interning for the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills, but Coach Mullet's priority is giving back to the community who believed in her from the start. So we first talked to you back in 2017. You were only a couple of years out of high school at that point. Was the end goal always to be head coach at my alma mater? I think for Coach Brooks it was. <laughs> All right, get you a partner. Peeking and seeking. How did your role as offensive coordinator come about? I went in and, and just let him know that, you know, I'm still around in town and if he needed something football-wise, just let me know and I could help him out. It just kind of happened, I guess. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was at that strange, you know, Christmas graduate from college and I had never before that moment considered myself a football coach or a coach of any kind just started to be like, you know what, I really do enjoy coaching for what it is and not just as a way for me to pass the time or yeah. something to do, like I really enjoy it. Like this could be something I do and I really started to consider taking over for Mr. Prokes. Nice and low, view the neck. Here we go, one whistle. Sit in the gap, sit, 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 pull. You own the gap to your left. You've lived this entire football life from that point till now. Can you kind of take us through some of your experiences, you know, in the game. Yeah, it has been a wild, what is it now, seven years since you've been here. Um, you know, I've been out to Baltimore interning with the Ravens as a tight ends coach. I was able to be with the Buffalo Bills, linebackers intern there. I spent a year in South Georgia coaching 7A football, working as a director of football operations, and now I'm at the head coach position. So it's just been kind of crazy when you, when you say it like that, all of the different places I've been and, and we're back here full circle. Why'd you come back? This is home. This is where I belong. Um, these are my people and, and these players are, you know, my little brothers and um, the kids that I watched grow up. Sit out here, when you go to do that, you wanna be next to For me to have these cool experiences with these people means more than if I would have them anywhere else. There aren't many high school coaches, certainly not a lot of first year high school coaches that have NFL experience. You know, what would you say you're most proud of, like, that you've accomplished? I mean, you're still young in this game. You're young in general. Yeah, yeah I think one of the biggest ones for me was going, um, leaving home. Uh, that was really big for me as a person. So I think going to those places was really important. Um, and I think the other one is the win. I was finally able to be there when those boys ended the two years of never winning. Um, and so that wasn't a moment for me. That was a moment for them to be, to get that off their back. So for me to be able to be there and, and help them just a little bit, you know, for them to take that step and finally overcome that, that hurdle was, was really special to me for them, for their sake. What is the future for Coach Sam Mullen? Like, what does it look like? I don't know. I'm a very 10 minutes ahead kind of person. Yeah. Uh, 10 days is hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> 10 days out, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Um, so for me to look that far out is, isn't really uh, a thing I've ever done. So I don't know, I don't know where it goes, um, but I'm just enjoying here right now and I think I'll be here for, for a while um, and giving it, you know, everything I have to give and, and making sure I do right by the boys and, and the kids that are coming up and already see me in the hallways and say things like, can't wait to play for you and things like that, like that's special. So being able to, to be here for a while is, I'm gonna be here. <laughs> The next mission for head coach Sam Mullet is to stabilize the youth program in Bear Lake. As she said, she's committed to giving her best to the community of Bear Lake, and we wish her all the best in her football endeavors. We have a lot more goodies going on throughout this halftime where Jackson Lumen Christie and Menominee are tied up at 14. Johnny, our guy, featuring that story on Sam Mullet. Johnny, take it away. The MHSAA Football Finals on Bally Sports Detroit are brought to you by Glassman Automotive. Got it at Glassman. Second half of the Division 7 State Championship between Menominee and Lumen Christie coming your way next. And back inside Ford Field, we got a good one cooking. In the Division 7 championship game, we're just about to get underway in the third quarter. Johnny Kane joined alongside by my partner, John Wangler. I'll tell you what, Lumen Christie's been in this position before, back in the state championship game for a second straight year. Menominee got off to a great start. I think both these teams probably took that halftime to reset a little. They did, a little bit, but it's a heavyweight fight. And, you know, last year Lumen Christie was down 12 in the fourth quarter, came back 115-12. They're a veteran team. There's 10 kids from that team who are playing today. So they didn't change anything. They just refocused. It, it hurt them. That fumble early hurt sure, them. Sure. But they came back, and uh, you got two evenly matched teams that are going at it. And uh, it's, a great, it's going to be a great second half, Johnny. Yeah, Menominee had the first 14. Lumen Christie with 14 to tie this game up here at the half. And, again, Division 7 is what gets it started. But we have a full slate of action coming up after this one. Division 3, Forest Hill Central against unbeaten Mason. That's coming your way at 1230. And then Division 5 at 4 o'clock, uh, Catholic Central against Corona. That's going to be a fabulous matchup. And then, of course, the nightcap in Division 1, Southfield A&T against unbeaten Belleville. Oh, boy. Oh boy, is Bryce right. Underwood. Here we go. Look out. A lot of talent, a lot of great matchups coming your way here on Valley Sports. We'll be back right after this. Go on, Our halftime highlights are brought to you by Wallside Windows. That was the man in the first half, number one in green. That is Cadell Williams, 12 carries, 133 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And there's a reason. Why he was a marked man coming into this game. Again, 1,500-yard rusher on the season. He can do it in a lot of different ways. He had a 45-yard touchdown run. That was his long. And we have a tie ball game. Let's send it downstairs. The third member of our crew, Lexi Ayala, standing by with Coach Grant. Brent. Thanks, Johnny. Coach, tied up 14-14 going into the half. Where do you think you can have an edge in that second half? Well, I think we still need to be multiple offensively, uh, move some guys around, get some matchups that we like. And then defensively, we got to start owning up. We, we did good the first series. After that, we need to be stronger on defense. Any adjustments you made the guys aware of in the locker room at the half? Um, defensively, there's got to be some personal decisions being made um, on some of our guys. And offensively, yeah, we made a couple adjustments on uh, where we could pick and choose, where we can get some double teams. but. Uh, they're a good football team. We're going to keep battling. Thanks, Coach. Good luck second half. Johnny? All right, Chad Brandt. Again, head coach at Stevenson for 20 years before coming to Menominee in 2017 as an assistant and now taking over for Joe Noah, who stepped down. He took over last year. And again, he's got this football team in good position as he takes a knee, shares a few words with his football team as they get ready to kick it away. That's Nathan Kopp. Having a chat with his head coach. I really like we're talking with Coach Brandt, man. He he's a team first guy. It's all about the team, and he likes uh, the camaraderie of the team. They love one another. 
They all get along, they all hang out together, and he's built a real nice program up there. Clayton Miller kicks it away, and Lumen Christie, Gabe King with the football, and King up to the 40-yard line. And good starting field position for Jackson Lumen Christie to start this second half. Again, 14 unanswered for the Titans. There's Timmy Crowley coming back out onto the field. Again, hadn't had to throw it too much, but you can see only 18 passing yards for JLC, but they're getting it done on the ground. Again, big chunk plays and time of possession, you know, not necessarily heavily slanted one way or the other. Both these teams, again, like to run the football, so that first half went by relatively quickly. Isaac Rayberg. And Cadell Williams in the backfield behind Crowley. And the give to Williams. Williams up to the 46-yard line before he is brought down by Trevor Terikoff, who tripped him up. Terikoff, the leading tackler for Menominee, number 11 in white. Nine tackles already in this game. Isn't that something we mentioned, you know, what a great offensive player he is. He's doing it, you know, all over the field offensively. But then to be the leading tackler on your defense, I mean, that's a football player. Second down and seven. Crowley to Williams. Williams up past the 50. Williams inside the 40-yard line. Cadell Williams. Some tough running. Good strength, good speed. Competitive kid picks up 18 yards before he's brought down by Tanner Terkoff. Seventy-seven. Luke Smith, as you can see, watch him pull here. Here we go. Coming out there, leading the way. Nice little. It's nice, just a really like a little little counter. And uh, Williams showing his great ability to make shallow cuts and have good body lean and running traffic. Rayberg inside handoff picks up a couple of yards. Blake Posh in on the tackle. So they went counter with Williams, and then they hit Rayberg right with a little inside trap. Their, their, their athletic line is able to do that because they, they trap, they pull these guards, they pull the tackles, and, you know, they're very, very versatile. And they're, and they're big. And guys who can move that well, and they're that big, and they're that athletic inside makes it very difficult for that defensive line, that defense for Menominee. Crowley to give to Williams. Williams picks up a couple of yards. That's going to bring up third and four. That's 133 yards rushing in that first half for Williams. See Blake Posh again in on the tackle for the Menominee defense. Number 22 in white. His dad, CJ, played on that 1998 state championship team some 25 years ago. One of two on third down for Jackson Lumen Christie. Williams and good pursuit initially by Menominee and Williams still on his feet. Cadell Williams inside the 10 yard line. You kidding me? I mean, that is wow. just a will. They got him in the backfield and he gets that first contact, goes 23 more yards to bring up first and goal before Jeremy Salmi brought him down. Yeah, the mark of a great back is keeping your feet moving after contact. And watch him, he spins out of it, he never stops pumping those legs. He breaks at least three or four tackles on his way. Uh, that's great individual effort. This kid is so athletic and tough and always going forward, picking up first downs and, and leaning in to getting more yardage. He got past Trevor Terkoff and Tanner Terkoff, Eli Beal, and a whole host of tacklers. This time, they brought in some pursuit. Blake Posh got in there in the backfield again. They clipped him, but Cadell Williams still able to fall forward. Picks he, up a couple of yards. He's a classic old school tailback. You line him up in that I formation, you get him a, a, a head of steam. Uh, they, have, they have great guys to run behind, and it's a beautiful, a thing of beauty. And you don't see this type of offense that much anymore, the I formation and two tight ends. And it's, uh, it's, it's really good to see. Second and goal. 
Crowley fakes the handoff. Timmy Crowley keeps it himself. Crowley inside the five yard line, going to be taken down just inside the two. Trevor Terkoff able to bring him down. Haven't seen a ton of that, Wangs, but they give it to the quarterback on the keeper. Well, he did a nice job. Little ball, little ball fake here. We'll see trying to hold those linebackers. You got a man in motion leading. You fake to your main back. Quarterback puts it on his hip, makes a nice cut to get back inside. And Crowley was dying to get into that end zone. Made a great effort. He sure was. And he is down. They're going to mark him just inside or just outside the one yard line, I should say. Third and goal. Inside give. Isaac Rayberg in short yardage situation. But I believe the Menominee defense held him short, and they do. Now you've got fourth and goal, less than a yard to go. What do you do? You give it to number one. You get your best player behind one of those tackles, either Pastor Riza or Luke Smith, and you uh, get the end zone. Menominee does a nice job, though. They get low. Their line is submarining. They did a good job stopping uh, the fullback Rayburg on that one. And so they're uh, obviously they're going to be ready. Fourth and goal. Two tights. And they muscle their way into the end zone. Jackson Lumen Christie. Oldest play in the book. They quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneak. Now they got something going. There's Timmy Crawley. He's not the biggest guy on the field, but he feels like it right now. Well, good for him because uh, he was trying to get in the end zone, made a great run, almost came up a little short, and was able to get there. So there's Crawley, and now Lumen Christie with its first lead of the game. Take a look at this one more time. Yeah, it was interesting. Crawley did look like he was maybe making a, a gesture. I don't know if he was confused or a different play, or he was doing that on purpose to act like he was confused and to do a quick snap and get in the end zone. So. Whatever, whatever they were doing, it worked. Yeah, went with the quick snap. Again, got to the line of scrimmage, presented a little confusion. We'll show it to you one more time. On fourth and goal from inside the one, Crowley, get low. Low man wins. Lumen Christie in front by seven. Well, this is the scene in Jackson, Michigan. This is the send-off for Lumen Christie bright and early this morning. It was a crisp morning out there, I can assure you that. But bring out your four-legged friends and wish the boys well as the Titans made their way here to Ford Field. Again, early start time, 9.30 here on a Sunday morning. I, I think it's also important we mention 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. Menominee plays in the central time zone, so it's almost like 8.30 body clock for those guys. But again, both of these fan bases with tremendous uh, fan support. One more look at the touchdown here, Wangs. What do you see here? Well, well, the quarterback is... Uh, uh, That's acting, isn't it? I think it is acting. Huh? I got to give him an Emmy say, What are one? we doing? Hey, Coach yeah. Brogan, what do you want here? Oh, oh who's yeah. confused? Oh, yeah, got it, got oh okay. It, it. Oh, here, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was good. That, look at Brogan. That, that was heady. Oh, her? Well, Coach Brogan said that Crowley was a heady guy, and he did a nice job there in, in uh, putting a little trickery in there. What did he say? He said, again, we might show a little more eye candy than we used to. But know? in the end, it's yeah, three decades, four decades ago. But in the end, we do what we do. It's blocking and tackling. He runs his quarterback, and now they've got a seven-point lead, 21 unanswered right now after a nine-play, 58-yard scoring drive. Deep man is Isaiah Odom from Menominee, and Odom with a head of steam up near the 25-yard line, and that is where Menominee will take over. Yeah, let's take a look. I, now, I saw this in real time, Herb Brogan. I think Herb, Herb looks like... Uh, what's Herb saying here? <laughs> hey. Now, you know him better than I do. Hey, the, old, the old sly fox, <laughs> come on. Say, hey, do whatever you want out there. I don't uh, care. I don't Just give me the end zone. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you guys got it from here. I didn't win 407 games not knowing what I'm doing, but you guys take it from here. Terkoff, quarterback keeper on the left side, nowhere to go. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. And again, this game, you talked about it, Wang, at halftime, kind of a shift in momentum. Both these teams 
you know, now you try to weather the storm, you come right back, heavyweight fight, call it what you will. But Lumen Christie right now seems like there aren't any butterflies now. It's just, hey, we're going to do what we do, and let's try to keep number 11 in white keep from carving us up. And what's so important, Johnny, that first drive of the second half to start the third quarter, that is a huge drive to set the tempo for the second half. Terkoff back to pass, plenty of time. Terkoff taking a shot, looking over the middle of the field. He had his intended target, Jeremy Salmi, his senior fullback, who got out deep behind the defense, but just out of the outstretched fingertips. And that'll bring up third and long. That was a great call. They just, they brought him out of the backfield and he threw it, gave him a lot of air. He got behind the secondary, ah, just out of his reach. Nice call, I like it. The one thing that does is it backs off the defense. They have to respect the deep ball and forget them for coming up and, and putting pressure on the run game. So I like I like that call. The Menominee, two of five on third down. There's the drive chart. Again, the way this game started, had the three and out, got the turnover, went touchdown, touchdown, but then turned over on downs each of the last two times they possessed the football. Well, well look. Coach Brandt comes out to the field. Timeout, Menominee. Well, that time, Johnny, they came out in trips to the field, and then they isolated Beal up there. They keep trying to get that one. They love that matchup when you get Beal out there in, uh, on, Brit on Hampton, and they, I think they're trying to set that up again. I think one thing I want to mention here, again, the relationship between Terkoff and Coach Brandt, right? Brandt brought that up on the phone. He says, sometimes his mom will call, <laughs> and Ann will say, hey, you keep him in check. And he says, that's like my coach on the field. We'll have some good, healthy back and forth. What are you seeing? Here's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. But uh, these guys will have some healthy exchanges to make sure, you know, they get into what they want to get into. And that's what you want out of a, a senior quarterback like that. You know, he's very competitive. Uh, he's a point guard in basketball. And, and that's, that's the, you know, that's when you really have something. And that's why it's good. It's good back and forth. And, and uh, it's gonna, it looks like they came out the same formation here, Johnny. Third and ten, out of the timeout. Four receivers on the near side of your screen. Terkov looking to his left, now rolling to his right. Steps into the throw over the middle, but uh, that'll be an incomplete pass, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Looking for Eli Beal, but Britton Hampton in coverage. And there is a flag on the field, so hang on. Excuse me, that was on third down, so we'll see if this brings up a fourth and ten. Late flag came in. Here's Brian Smith. Pass interference. Offense. The penalty is declined. It will be fourth down. So the flag did come in late. And it'll be offensive P.I., so it is going to be a punting situation. Yeah, they've been going at it pretty good up there. Uh, Hampton and, and Britton, so they all got their hands on them. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot, a lot of contact, going on. Yeah. There's some pushing off. You call that chicken fighting? I've heard that term, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, exactly. There was a lot of it going on yep. there. So Terkoff back to punt. And gets a decent punt away. Gabe King says, get away from it. And that takes a Menominee bounce. And it'll go out right about the 30-yard line. And that is where Jackson Lumen Christie will take over. 46-yard punt. Lumen Christie will get the football when we come back. Welcome back to Ford Field for your D7 high school football state finals. Jackson Lumen Christie up against Menominee. Jackson Lumen Christie's head coach, Herb Brogan, has 43 years at the helm under his legacy and 12 state championships, working hard for number 13 tonight. However, as for his most meaningful legacy, it's his family. Two of his sons, Sean and Shane Brogan, have been alongside their dad on Lumen Christie's sidelines for years. Sean's been an assistant coach for over two decades and Shane for more than 15 years. However, before head coach Herb Brogan brought his boys on as assistant coaches, Sean and Shane brought Herb some rings. 
Sean played on Herb's 1996 state championship team, and Shane was his father's QB in the 2000 state finals championship team. Now, one thing's for sure. State finals football is definitely in the blood of the Brogan family. No question about that. Shane up in the booth. That's why we didn't see him. Cadell Williams with a big play on first down for Lumen Christie. And again, that coach, coaching's in the blood for the Brogans. And hey, let me also say his wife Mary been the rock through all this as well. Some good genetics in that family. 26-yard run for Cadell Williams. Williams just doing a great job again. That time they went behind Pastoriza on the short side and Cadell just picked his way through and, and stiff armed and forearmed and came up with a, a huge first down. Cadell Williams now up to 182 yards rushing in this game. What a game. They fake it and they give it to Gabe King. Oh! What incredible pursuit by Landon Bardowski. He wasn't fooled. Well, Bardowski saved a huge play there. That's watching film. Watch this reverse. They're bringing him back around. Now watch Bardowski stay home, or come come through with penetration and, and make. If he gets past Bardowski, he's going a long way. I can tell you that. There is a flag on the field. Dead ball. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense. 15-yard penalty. The down will count. It will be second down. So that will back up Lumen Christie even more. So negative play on the reverse, and then they get the personal foul. So they were up near midfield. Now you're backing this thing way back into their own territory, and the Titans, they're going to get it about the 32-yard line, heading in the wrong direction, Wayne. Yeah, that, that what they wanted to do for sure. And they're a very disciplined team. You don't see that a lot from uh, Lumen Christie. So they got a hole they got to dig out of. <laughs> I'd say so. 34 yard hole. Second down. Timmy Crowley up under center. Cadell Williams. Williams up near the 40 yard line. Again, so tough to bring down with that initial defender. Eli Beal able to bring him down. Number four in white. One of the captains on the defensive side of the football field. You see all that? Used to have like grass up in your face, right? Now on these new turf fields, you get those little black rubber pellets. Rubber pellet, yeah. Got to get low against a guy like him, and that's a good tackle from Eli Beal. Beal's had a great uh, game so far, offensively and defensively. He's another of the studs that they have going both ways. Good athlete on the edge. He's one of the rushes on defense. Late clock, two, one, and Herb Brogan realizes it, and he calls timeout. So on third and 26, oh, no. Lumen Christie Christ. has to call time. There's no acting here. I think he is upset this time. Yeah. Hey, keep up with everything MHSAA on social media. You can look him up on Facebook, on X, on Instagram, on TikTok, and on YouTube for football finals updates, event announcements, video highlights, and high school athletics news from all around the great state of Michigan. It's the best way to connect with the MHSAA every day. How many of those social media apps do you have, Mike? Is it? I'm not really sure what social media is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my kid, my kid, my kids have a lot, but I have, uh, I have not. Not even a Facebook account. Oh, I don't partake. Man. My wife, oh, my okay. wife tries to get me on there, but uh, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I got enough time getting back to my emails and texts. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm old, dude. So come on. I got you. Come on. I got you. If you want to get That's a hold okay. of me, call me. Yeah, call you. Let's send you over. Fax, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll fax you. I'll page you. All right, third and 26 out of the timeout. Lou and Christie need something. Everything's been going in their favor from the second quarter on, but now backed up against it. Crowley, obvious passing situation. Back to pass with time. Reaching back, throw away. Gabe King downfield. Good coverage by Trevor Terkoff. Number 11, guess who? Aaron Brunel also back there. Turkoff did a nice job. He ran, what they ran was a post-corner route, and that time King was not able to get 
the, the, the safety off the hash, and they end up obviously being double teamed, and it was a great play by Turkoff getting over there and, and defending that. That's a hard route to cover if you do it right. Four and 26. Back to punt. Salazar. Bardowski back deep for Menominee. Oh, he's got a running lane if he wants it. Up the far sideline. Bardowski up past midfield. Landon Bardowski at the 45-yard line. Bardowski. Brought down by Colin Wilson and company. 35-yard punt, 30-yard return. He plays man. Now watch, watch. Whenever you have a line drive punt like that, they are very susceptible to a good return. And Bartowski did a great job picking that up and with momentum and working his way up the sideline. Here he is making a couple great cuts. And then he, when he turns the corner, he gets the edge. Watch him. Good vision. Cuts back in. Puts him in great field position. All UP running back. Very talented. In that third phase of the game, that being special teams, a great starting field position for the Maroons. Terkoff keeps it himself. Good pursuit by the Lumen Christie defense. First man up against him was London Hampton, and then ridden out of bounds by Pierre Gray. Second down. Maybe got a yard. Well, that, he was lucky to get a yard. Because uh, Hampton had a good shot at him there, and, and uh, he was able to elude him, and, and Gray all over the field pushed him out. Direct snap to Bardowski. Right up the middle, inside the 40-yard line. That'll bring up third and manageable. Pierre Gray, one more time, leading tackler. Give him another one, but not before. Bardowski picks up six yards on the play. Pierre Gray, fabulous player, number nine in green, two-year starter. He's been all over it today. Plays with emotion. Big, strong kid. 205 pounds. Third and short. Bardowski picks up the first down. Yeah, they found something that they like. Josh Dumont brings him down, but now they found a little something, as you mentioned. Going to the captain, number 23 in white, Landon Bardowski. Great blocking down there. Uh, it was Swanson came down. They opened a nice hole. They've gone to a two year, two in a row. Quick snap. Bardowski just straight ahead. Everybody blocks down. Gap blocking. Old school football. Nice first down. This time it's Terkoff with Bardowski blocking for him. Terkoff makes the first man miss. And Trevor Terkoff knocked out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Josh Dumont able to get there, but that's going to be a first down for Menominee. 11 yards on the carry. Nothing fancy, just a quarterback sneak. Direct snap. You get the fullback out there. You get a tackle pulling. You get the, everybody blocking down. And I tell you, you got to wrap up Terkoff. You know, he's, he, you talk about uh, Williams. You, you know, it's tough to bring him down uh, with one player. You better wrap him up. London Hampton, number four in green, had the first crack at him but couldn't get there. Handoff. Rather, keeper from Terkoff. Oh, Trevor Terkoff still with it. Diving for the pylon. They're going to say he's in. 21-yard touchdown scamper from Trevor Terkoff. Great effort, individual effort. Watch this effort at the end. Diving, diving to get that ball inside the pylon. Incredible athleticism. And just keeping his foot in bounds, the inside foot right there, and then the lean. That's your leader, that's your guy. Look at that, look at him laying out. And the whole rest of the team feeds off efforts like that. I mean, that's why he's the, he's the man up there. I mean, Trevor Terkoff, mind you, Lumen Christie had scored 21 unanswered until that point. They are still going to line up to go for two 
Down 21 20. This is what Menominee does. Terkoff out of the shotgun. Back to pass. Terkoff left all alone. Landon Bardowski and the Maroons back in front. John Wagner. Great call. It was a great scheme that they ran. They brought the outside receiver across the formation and just leaked Bardowski out. Bardowski, you see him coming right into the flat. What they did was they cleared out everything with the wide receiver and the tight end. So they brought the defensive backs across the formation. Very difficult to cover him with a linebacker. Nice call. And on that drive, it was all Terkoff and Bardowski. Five plays, 45 yards, 129 time of possession. And it was Terkoff on the 21 yard quarterback keeper. They get the two point try. The Maroon student body fired up here on a Sunday morning. That was so important for Menominee to, to answer, right, Johnny? They had 21 unanswered points. And, uh, you know, there was a great drive to start the first half or second half by. Uh, Lumen Christie and then they come right back and, and uh, deliver a punch. So this is uh, This is gonna go down to the wire. I can assure you Cadell Williams and Gabe King back deep for Lumen Christie who now trails by one And it'll be Williams who gets the football Williams makes the first man miss and the second and the third and the fourth Williams up near midfield. This kid can play. Clayton Miller eventually brings him down. There's Williams catching. And one of the rules, you don't catch a ball above your head. He reaches up, grabs it, and then he makes three, four guys miss getting to the outside. When he gets ahead of steam, not very easy to bring down, for <laughs> no, sure. Sir. Man, this guy, special, special player. Williams, how about 19 carries for 260 yards and two scores? And he'll be back next year, driving. Yeah, and getting it done yep. in the return game as well. Gabe King in the backfield for Crowley. That's who they pitch it to. King, a little shifty back, gets to the 45 yard line before he's brought down by Trevor. Terkoff, now a team leading 13 tackles for Trevor Terkoff, number 11 in white. That's the third time they've done that little quick toss sweep to King, and it's been effective all the time. It's great. It's kind of a changeup because it's more slow developing when they get Williams out of the eye, but then they get King coming out either in motion or they just have a short pitch to the short side. And, uh, it's been effective every time they've run uh, this morning. Off to Williams. Williams, quick shift out. Oh, Cadell Williams inside the 25. Every time you think he's going down, he just gets another burst. Now approaching 240 yards on the day. That one worth 23. And there he is at the end of the run. Watch him lower his shoulders, get pad under pad, and just keep his feet moving and always leaning forward, man. That's the mark of a great back. Trevor Terkoff came up. But wasn't able to get him. Aaron Brunel and you see, got him. And you see King, right? Yep. Uh, you know, you see him when he does with his runs and passes and returns and everything. But he's a hell of a blocker. He's done a great job uh, all morning setting up extra yardage. This time they give it to the up back. Isaac Rayberg inside the 10 yard line. Lumen Christie is looming large. Trevor Terkoff able to bring him down, but that's another first down for the dark green in Vegas gold. Give him 15 yards. On the carry. Well, when you get a when you get a return like that to set up your drive, the momentum, you know, and then like we said, it's been a game of, uh, of momentum, a game of runs. And it all comes down to the fourth quarter here in the Division Seven Championship game. It is a one-point game. Settle in. We got a good one brewing here at Fort Field.
this special presentation of the MHSAA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Trinity Health. We see all of you by Figer Law. All we do is win. And by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. The great Barry Sanders. See Wayne Fonts there in the background as well. Johnny Kane, John Wangler, Lexi Ayala bringing you the D7 championship game from here at Ford Field in downtown Detroit, Michigan. First and goal. Lumen Christie, Cadell Williams falling forward. What's new? He gets down to the three yard line. That'll bring up second and goal. Torin Davis, the sophomore linebacker, makes the stop for Menominee. And again, more of the same. They're getting heavy doses of Cadell Williams. I'll sprinkle in Isaac Rayberg every now and again, but keep him off guard. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's been all Williams. And there it is, same two in the backfield. The give, Williams, leaning, Williams. Oh, he's in. They give him the touchdown. Cadell Williams initially looked like he was stopped. Second effort reaches the ball across the goal line. And Lumen Christie back in front. There it is. Watch him stop. And then he keeps, he does not go down. Stretches out, gets over the goal line. And then it's tough, tough running. Yeah, keep the feet moving, keep the feet moving, keep the feet moving. And falling forward every time he's brought down, John Wagner. He gets his pads underneath the pads. He, I mean, that guy is a, is a tremendous running back. Uh, and his effort and toughness, what Coach mentioned, and, and his elusiveness, I mean, he's got all the qualities of a great one. He had three touchdowns in the semifinal win over Millington. He's got three touchdowns here today. And Lumen Christie will line up for the point after. Andrew Salazar. Snap, hold, kick is short. It is short. 27-22. We mentioned that because the nominee is a team that typically goes for two. So now you've got a five-point lead as opposed to six. Right? Let's yeah. think about that. Yeah. Let's take a look at this touchdown run one more time. So it just comes out of the eye formation. You got a lead blocker. You got seven, you've got big 73, Pastor Riza blocking down, and he just and you got Williams just fighting and fighting until he gets across that goal line. And keep in mind, Williams had that 45-yard kick return to set up the drive. They go five plays, 57 yards. Williams with the three-yard touchdown run. You want to hear his numbers for the day? about 22 for 246 and three touchdowns. That's an average of 11.2 per carry, so says Mike Braddock, and I won't argue with that. That's he, big time. And Johnny, he's doing it against a defense that's a great defense that pursues, I mean, he's not doing it against, uh, you know, an average defense, trust me. And Bardowski and Caden Bell back deep for the Menominee Maroons who have work to do. Bardowski fields it deep. In his own territory, Bardowski up past the 20. Tough yardage up to about the 23-yard line. We're looking for a score, a schedule, or a story. MHSAA.com has you covered with everything you need to follow high school sports here in Michigan. Works great on mobile devices and makes tournament information even easier to find. Plus, you can get all the feature stories and the finals recaps on the front page. Check out MHSAA.com today. Terkoff back out to lead the Maroon offense. Mardowski, direct snap, picks up maybe a yard to bring up second and long. Bardowski, I'll tell you what, his passion for competing, oh. passion for playing the game, you know how it is. You've been around at those high schoolers. He loves it. He loves it. And he's a, he's a tough matchup, man. He gets after it. He blocks. He runs. Uh, he's a, a spiritual, emotional leader for this team. He loves competing. And the Terkoff brothers, too. They got it going in their household. No question about that. Terkoff, 
fakes the handoff. Here comes pressure. Trevor Terkov shakes the pressure. There's his brother. Tanner left all alone. Tanner Terkov to the house. Seventy-six yards from Trevor to Tanner Terkov and the Maroons back in front by a point. Well, when you got a guy like Trevor who can extend the play, uh, that makes it very tough on that secondary. And obviously, there was a, uh, a breakdown in the secondary for allow his brother to come, Tanner, to become so wide open. And it was just a function too of, of Trevor being able to buy time until his brother gets open. Just a little fake and he rolls to the left and makes a great move. Keeps his feet and puts it out there. You're throwing, he's throwing to the, rolling to the left and throwing across his line. Great play, athletic play. Two point try is good. Caden Bell on the receiving end for Menominee. And now the Maroons with the three point lead. This is unbelievable. <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's whoever's going to have the ball last. 118 receiving yards for Tanner Terkoff, who came in right around 400 on the season. He's having a career day. Again, talented young man, just a sophomore, and there's big brother Trevor <laughs> getting an earful from Landon Bardowski. And this one ain't even close to being over yet. Oh, no. Nice play, just leaks out. And there's Caden Bell, that's the two point try, and here it is, 76 yards. Tanner, the right-hander throwing across his body to his brother. Great play. Welcome back inside Ford Field, where Menominee is up 30 to 27 in your D7 high school football state finals. Now, Johnny, I know you talked about the Turkoff brothers quite a bit today, but I have a little bit to add to that. So Menominee's head coach, Chad Brandt, said it's QB Trevor Turkoff's competitiveness. That's his best trait and the key in the QB finding over 1,700 passing yards, 1,000 plus rushing yards, and over 38 touchdowns. That competitive edge sometimes, though, has emphasis on edge. Coach Brandt said Turkoff has a coach's level IQ and a competitive passion in a league of his own that sometimes has to be reined in. It was actually Turkoff's mother, Anne, who knows her son's stubbornness best and ordered Coach Brandt to keep her Trevor in check. As for Tanner, they don't have to worry about him. He listens just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And Tanner, again, he will be the quarterback in waiting. Remember, he's playing JV. He had an opportunity. Could have been the JV quarterback all season. He says, I'll play varsity up there. You need me at receiver? I'll do it. That was a pretty good decision. Decision paid off well here in the yeah. state championship game. And what's interesting, Wang, is we look at how this game's unfolded again with that all coming down to the fourth. Those two touchdowns came exactly one minute apart, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're Lumen Chris, you're feeling good. Okay, now we finally got the lead. A minute later, Menominee says, hey, we ain't going anywhere. And we got pushed around a little bit. But we ain't going anyplace. Well, it's, it's, it's so much momentum, as we talked about. And, you know, they miss that extra point, right? You score a touchdown, you miss an extra point. That is deflating. And you got to bounce back. And... They're going to get their opportunity right here. Crowley under center. The give. Cadell Williams. Williams with the lane. Cadell Williams bounces it to the outside. Cadell Williams down at the 44 yard line. You know what's interesting about Cadell, too, is just like all great backs, the more you give them the ball, the better they get. And he's just, he continues. He's not slowing up one bit. He's run the ball over 20 times, but he continues. And he's, he's like, he's warmed up now. He's in his groove. He's in his zone. And, you know, between him and uh, uh, Trevor, the, you know, there's, uh, you got two superstars leading their teams and uh, making this one heck of a shootout. 263 yards on the ground for number one in green. That being Cadell Williams. This time they fake it. Timmy Crowley back to pass. Crowley rolling right. He'll keep it. Crowley stays on his feet. Knocked down inside the 30-yard line. First down. Jackson, Lumen, Christie, Hunter, Thronson, Westby able to bring him down. 
14-yard gain. That time, they, yeah, that time was the first time we saw. They tried to run a bootleg. They faked the fullback and then faked a little bit to Williams and rolled him out. They brought the tight end across. They had a wide receiver dragging deep. Credit Menominee with – that was a sack. That was a sack coverage. He picked up some yards on the bootleg, but they did a great job defensively because they were trying to get guys downfield and hit him with a pass. Williams and good pursuit tackling Blake Posh, the sophomore linebacker, number 22 in white, first one to get there. And Williams bottled up on that one. Again, approaching 270 yards rushing in the championship game. And as you mentioned, he's coming back. <laughs> he's coming back. He's coming back Bergen next year. That's a problem. If you're in the uh, the Catholic High School League, that, that's a good building block to start with. <laughs> yeah. You say, wait, what are you going to do next year, Coach? Uh, we're going to run it first. We're going to run it like we always have. We're going to run it like we always will. We're going to be steady. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's Williams off the left side. Williams diving forward. Going to be about three yards shy of the first down. Eli Beal in on the stop. Gain of four. Yeah, so it's just so funny. Unassuming Herb Brogan said, you know, I think the key to being successful year after year is keeping this thing steady. Yep. Say, Coach, steady's playing 500 football and uh, hanging around. That's what I think it's steady. You guys are dominating no matter what league they put you in. Well, and he said that, you know, going to the Detroit Catholic League this year was good for the fact that they played a lot of high-level competition. It was a little tougher traveling, but it helped them out. Rayburg. Leaning forward again, the short yardage back. He is right at the pylon. The nominee says, we think he's short. And it looks like he will be about a half yard short, but Lumen Christie will line up to go for it on fourth and less than a yard. Big play. You don't need me to tell you. Well, you know, it's, it, the clock is running. And so, yeah, this is, uh, this is a huge play here for the fourth quarter. But Menominee sideline, traveling down from the UP, making a lot of noise here inside Ford Field. Crowley on the quarterback sneak, stood up at the line of scrimmage, but the old tush push. Well, what do you call it? That's that's the that's it. That's the new current <laughs> term, Johnny. Crowley gets the first down. Yeah. That's politically correct. There's Crowley, exactly. just like he did at the goal line, and there's the push. Exactly. Right in there. He's right on it. It's like a rugby scrum. Isaac Rayburg, there you go. Look at Rayburg. Gets his hands yep. on him, says, I got you. Charlie yep. Saunders also helping push the pile. There's Saunders. Oh, and then, and then Williams, Williams come he, in. He jumps in. He says, hey, we got you. We got you, Timmy. Remember, Timmy Crowley, his dad uh, played for Herb Brogan as well. Dad, Tim Sr. That's great the to see 90s. the legacies on both sides. You know, that's sure. a, that's good stuff. It's in the blood. Gabe King trying to get to the outside, but Trevor Terkoff in there to knock him down. Leading tackler, give him another one. What doesn't he do? Here we go. Watch him coming up. Safety position. It's like a heat-seeking missile. Well, he has, I mean, obviously very athletic, but he has great closing speed defensively. Good form tackle, 16 tackles to lead everybody today. Hand off to Williams. Williams, ridden down. And in on the stop was Isaiah Odom, number eight white. Inside five and a half minutes to play in the football game. Newman Christie on the move, down three. Third down. They both have two timeouts left, so it's going to be interesting to see how that, if that even comes in to be a factor here down the stretch. Third and seven. Crowley with the hard count. Trying to pick up five the easy way, but Menominee stays poised. Discipline. Yep. And a timeout on the field. Christie, their second of the half. So Lumen Chris is going to use one here. We are going to take a timeout along with Herb Brogan. Big third down play coming up. 
for his Lumen Christie Titans. Down three. Time for the Menards big money moment. Cadell Williams, 26, 273, and three touchdowns. He's also got a 45-yard kickoff return. Cadell Williams has been the man today for the Titans of Lumen Christie. They're going to continue to call on him. We've got a third and seven situation here. Four down territory, I would assume here, John Wangler. But if you're Herb Brogan, what are they thinking? Well, you know, when we talked to him this week, Johnny, what Coach said, he said, listen, we like to throw when we want to, not when we have to. This should be more of a maybe have to type situation. Now, they're very good at running the football, but uh, it can go either way. They pitch it. Williams got blockers. Williams trying to turn the corner, but good pursuit by the Menominee Maroon defense, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, that's what these guys have been known for coming in. They have great team speed they pursue well that time we did a toss sweep to the field you got the tight end and the fullback kicking out he had a nice little lane but look how quick look how quick uh, trevor uh, turkoff closes i mean he is sideline to sideline and i was skeptical when they said he was better defensively but he might be by it i mean he is special both sides of the ball play the game here fourth and four lumen christie needs it Crawley, rolling right, Crawley throwing, he's got him, Gabe King. Oh my, 11 yard touchdown. John, you just said, Coach Brogan said, we'll throw it when we want to. We don't ever want to feel like we throw it when we have to. And there on fourth down, he rolls Crawley out in the go-ahead touchdown. Dude, they do what they want. They're steady, consistent. A nice, safe rollout. A nice little outcut by King. Great job, I tell you. They don't, there's no, uh, no pressure. Or they don't get rattled. They just keep doing what they do. Salazar splits the uprights. It's a four-point lead. How about this? Timmy Crowley had not had to throw it a ton. He's got two completions today. That one for the touchdown to his senior wideout, Gabe King, and he threw an absolute dart. And he put it in the exact right space. When you're throwing an outcut, you got to throw it out of the field so he can catch it. Watch him. Nice job by King. Great route. He takes him inside, dig route, comes back outside, makes a great catch, great move. The ball was right where it had to be. If he threw it behind him or made him reach behind him, they would have knocked it down. Tremendous play by Crowley. Leading receiver, not a huge individual, but a huge presence. 5'8", 165 yards. And that is something he won't ever forget. Lumen Christie out in front, 34 to 30. Don't blink. Plenty of football left. 10 plays, 61 yard scoring drive. Took six minutes and 11 seconds. Grounded and pounded. King with the 11 yard touchdown reception. Landon Bardowski, Isaiah Odom, back deep for the Menominee Maroons, who showed that quick strike ability last time they had the football. They got a lot of weapons. They have a lot, a lot of weapons, and they're, it's going to be an exciting uh, last four minutes, no question. Salazar to kick it off for Lumen Christie. He gets into it, a booming kick, but returnable. Isaiah Odom. Odom looking for a block, gets past one, flag comes in on the play. Odom gets up near the 30-yard line, but this one's going to be coming back. That's not going to, they're not going to be happy with that, Johnny. They're going to, uh, they're going to go backwards, I think. Yeah, I think you're right on that, partner. It's Coach Brandt asking for confirmation. And we'll give it to you as soon as we have it. But it looked like either holding or a little block in the back. During a return, block in the back, return team. You called it, Penalty Johnny. Penalty will be yep. enforced half the distance. First down, Menominee. Well, the tough part for Menominee, you know, is the fact you had it up near the 30, but where that block in the back took place, 
Now you got to start at the 10 yard line. Again, ton of time, but now you've got to go 90 yards and you need a touchdown. Yeah, that was, uh, he got him. And uh, he's right in front of the referee, so good call. Bardowski with the football. Bardowski able to get to the second line of defense. Josh Dumont, Ryan Waliki in on the stop. Josh Dumont, Ryan Waliki on the stop. That'll bring up second down. Going to give him three yards on the carry. Approaching three and a half minutes to play in the ball game. There's Trevor Terkoff, 7 of 16 for 180 yards and a couple of touchdowns through the air. He's got 13 for 90 on the ground and another rushing touchdown. This time he gets the handoff and then hands it back off to Isaiah Odom. Make that Tanner Terkoff. That was number nine. So what brother to brother and oh brother. Now you got third and six inside three minutes to play. Well, this is where all those double sessions and practicing all year long and winter conditioning uh, is where you got to reach down and pull something out. Maroons three of seven on third down. Terkoff back to pass, looking to the outside. Good coverage on the outside. No whistle. Fourth down. Britton Hampton in coverage. He was looking for a senior tight end, Eli Beal. Grant saw contact. And now on fourth and six, timeout Menominee. And now they've got to get it sorted out. Yep. The officials call timeout. Initially said Menominee had called time. Coach is looking for some clarification. Now he's looking. Not tough, tough to say. Initially they said Menominee called timeout. But now the officials are discussing, so it's a fourth and six. That's how much we know. The officials are conferring down on the field, and we'll wait for the announcement from Brian Smith. Fourth and six. Game on the line, season spot. on the line. Well, you're gonna you gotta put the ball in uh, obviously Trevor's hands to make a play. A lot of contact up on the top there, and I think that's what Coach Brandt was saying. Yeah, yeah but you can't review that. Well, those two guys have been going at it all day, you know, and, and that's that's the uh, that's what they're trying to see. Is it's Hampton and and, uh, and Beal have been going at it. So now do you go back to something like that again? And now that you got their attention, yeah, go back to your one of your best pass catchers I, well, on the outside. The one of three on fourth down today, John. They yeah. need it here. They, yeah, that's, this is it. It's coming down to it. Terkar out of the shotgun. Here comes pressure. Terkar steps up, avoids the first one. Terkar with his legs. And Trevor Terkar with a fabulous individual effort keeps the season alive for the Menominee Maroons. A 20 yard gain on fourth down, and they will spot the football and Menominee back in business. What an effort. Now, great coverage by Lumen Christie. This is all, an, all a move, all his athleticism. Terkoff again being bothered, and backpedaling just has to throw it out of bounds. Isaac Rayberg brought pressure this time. Here he is. Pressure, he steps up. Keeps extends the play. Thought they had him there. Oh mercy, man! That's that's all individual, and that's uh, and that's why they you know they are where they are. And, and I'll tell you, give Lumen Christie a ton of oh, reach the cool. line of scrimmage. It is second down. They were initially not to cut you out there, John. I believe they were looking at a potential uh, intentional grounding, but yeah, he got it past the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up second and ten. But you're right, great individual effort. Again, mm -hmm. stars shining bright today. Fidel Williams on the other side. Trevor Terkoff here with a chance. The senior quarterback. Rolling 
to the near side. Now with time, back to his right. Terkoff across the field. Bardowski needs a block. Bardowski cuts to the far side. Makes one man miss, past the first down marker. And Landon Bardowski brought down by Isaac Rayberg, but not before another. Menominee first down near midfield. They'll give him 13 yards. We are now under two minutes to play in the ball game. Again, not quite how you draw it up, but they're lining up. <laughs> Give Bardowski credit for finding the open area, making himself available when Turkoff is scrambling. Takes the handoff to Bardowski. Again, Turkoff with time, pointing, looking for Bardowski. Good coverage downfield. And Pierre Gray in coverage. That'll bring up second down. Two timeouts remaining for Menominee with 142 on the game clock. Now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Now with holiday cash, returning AZ plan escape lessees can lease an escape for $239 a month for 24 months. See your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer today. Ball at the 48 yard line. Four receivers to the near side of your screen. And a timeout on the field. And it will be taken by Coach Chad Brandt and Menominee. That'll leave them with one. He wanted to make sure they got the right call in here on second and ten. I'm not sure Coach wanted to have to call that timeout at this time. Time now for the player of the game brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. And it is Trevor Terkoff. Again, the game's leading tackler has been great in secondary in pass coverage. There he is, that heat-seeking missile coming up. 17 tackles, peels the gloves off when he's on offense. And all he's done is gotten 193 yards and two touchdowns throwing the football, another 110 yards on the ground. This was a big play when he found his baby brother, Tanner Terracon. <laughs> and here it was, the play of the game, season on the line. And Terracon able to scramble on fourth down. And now the Maroons down four with a chance out of the timeout. Terkoff steps into the throw, looking over the meadows, looking for Eli Beal. Good coverage by the Titans defense, Josh Dumont. Dumont was not fooled. They just tried to bring Beal across. They've been trying to get Beal on some go routes up the sideline. That time, they brought him on an inside move, and Dumont did a great job staying with him. Sailed that pass just a little bit. Dangerous, dangerous when it sails, especially at Williams back there in center field. So fortunate that was not uh, possibly picked off. Third down, 10 yards to go. Rolling to his left, coming back to his right. He's got Beal. Beal needs a blocker. He won't get there. Pierre Gray brings him down. That'll bring up fourth down. 120 remaining in the game. Do you use your time out here? Coach Brandt says play on. Second fourth down of this drive. Terkoff rolling to his left. Scrambling. Terkoff in hot pursuit. Oh boy. Still scrambling. He's looking for help. Terkoff brought down by London Hampton. The flag. There's a flag down on the field, but I believe that will be holding. And Lumen Christie, the defense, somehow, some way, able to get pressure and continue to bring it for a loss of 27 against Trevor Terkoff. Cash is broken. Offense. The penalty is declined. It will be first down, Newman Christie. It was Isaac Rayberg and Cassius Griffin giving chase. Rayberg eventually able to bring him down. And in a game that has shown us a little bit of everything, there you saw the will and the fight. But eventually, 
Time ran out for Trevor Terkoff and the Maroons. He was doing everything he possibly could, buying time, trying to get somebody free. Give credit to that secondary of Lumen Christie. They were solid all year. They've been consistent, and they did a great job. There were so many coverage sacks this game, and it really forced Trevor to buy time. And thank God he's such a great athlete. He was able to pick up, make some plays, but uh, they just came a little short on this last one. And the victory formation for Jackson Lumen Christie. Tremendous job by Herb Brogan in this group. Got some talented kids. London Hampton, a talented freshman, he was the one who eventually got to Trevor Terkoff on that mm -hmm. fourth down play. Just a freshman, he'll be back. And again, as you mentioned, Cadell Williams, the tailback, is a junior. He'll be back, which means Lumen Christie will be back. But that is. And their quarterback will be back. Crowley will be back. So they got they got some futures bright for the uh, Lumen Christie. That'll do it. Jackson Lumen Christie racing an early 14 point deficit. Much like they did a season ago against Traverse City St. Francis. They come back and go Let's back go. to back in the state championship. 13 titles in program history, 11 since the mid-90s under head coach Herb Brogan. What's, uh, what do we say, Johnny? Steady. Steady, steady baby. Just steady. Uh, what, what a machine. And, you know, to, to see what they've done and built the, the program that they have. Uh, and then, you know, you got to talk about Menominee. I mean, for them to get down here and compete the way they did and play, uh, I mean, they were nothing short of fantastic. Uh, hats off to all those guys. Uh, Trevor Turkoff, I mean, I'd pay a lot of money to watch him play. He was so exciting. And, uh, you know, they all play. They all played their hearts out. And that's the beauty of high school football, right, is that you see these guys just laying it out here at this level. Both well-coached teams came in with great game plans. I thought both game plans were very good. They made, they did some things outside the box. They took some people out of their comfort zone. But uh, in the end, they both want to run the ball. But they did what they had to do. And, and uh, you know, Lumen Christie is, is a machine. And it's, uh, it's impressive to see what they've done over so many years. Tremendous, tremendous high school football game. Let's get it down to Lexi Ayala standing by with Cadell Williams. Yeah, I'm alongside running back Cadell Williams. Three touchdowns, an average of over 11 yards per carry. How are you able to find so much success on offense? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'll start with our line. We preached about being physical and not giving up, being mentally tough, and they came out and did it, and they made it happen for me. And it was on defense that you guys were so physical down the stretch, especially that last play there to seal the deal. You play defense as well. Talk to me about how you guys came through so clutch and strong. It's all about mentality. We came out knowing we had to get a big stop to take it away. That's what we did. Cadell, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Thanks, Lexi. I'll tell you what. John, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, and I know you've covered the college game a bunch, and, and we both watch a lot of pro football, but the emotion right there, Cadell Williams, that's what we're here for, and that's how important this weekend is to all these kids, and a lot of them. Now, Cadell Williams is going to get an opportunity to come back, and, of course, he'll probably play on Saturdays uh, when he graduates after next year, but for a lot of these kids, the last time they put on a high school football uniform and to be able to finish it here, again, I know both coaches will say, hey, be proud of everything we've accomplished to this point. But this is special, and that was uh, an incredible, incredible high school football game. It really was. We, we were so blessed to be able to call this one. You know, sometimes you get the blowouts and that, but this was as good as it gets for a high school game. And these kids, 90% of them will never play after this game. And the fact that they were able to get here to Ford Field to experience and to play their hearts out and the memories that they're going to have with their families to come see him, there's nothing better than high school football on Friday Night Lights. That's what it's all about. And uh, it's so pure. It's the way it should be. And, and uh, I'm just very happy to be able to be a part of it and to watch you know, these teams come down and compete. When they get down here to Ford Field, these teams are special. And they both proved it this morning. And we're so fortunate to be a part of this and, and watch this performance. And there's the hardware they fought hard to get. Jackson Lumen Christie, Division 7 champions, 13-1 on the season. 
Head coach Herb Brogan will have a lot of these kids back. Again, small senior group, only 10 seniors. And this senior group really took control of this team, willed themselves to get back here to the championship game at Ford Field. And they had to fight for everything they got, man. Menominee was game all morning long. And again, in games like this, it comes down to a couple of plays. Fabulous, fabulous individual efforts. We were talking with Cadell Williams, 27 carries for 276 yards. We'll show you some of those highlights because I'll tell you what, to see him in person, even more special than what we saw on tape. Oh yeah, he's a man and to see the emotion, the raw emotion uh, that he showed after the game. I mean, what a tough kid. We mentioned that in the beginning, that's what he said. Obviously he's a great athlete, he's strong and tough, he's athletic, but just to, just to see his emotion and, and the big way he played on the big stage. This is a big stage and for a team, uh, him to step up like he did and, uh, and do what he did on both sides of the ball, so, so impressive. Goodell Williams. 1,900 all-purpose yards coming into today. And now you want to talk about all-purpose yards today, better than 325 all-purpose yards for that young man. Special, special performance. And congratulations to the Jackson Lumen Christie Titans. We're talking about Brogan again. Third winning his coach in state history. Still trailing John Harrington from Farmington Hills Harrison. But, uh, you know, again, I, I used to work in, uh, in the state of Kansas, and I remember being around uh, uh, some legendary high school football coaches, and C.J. Hamilton was the all-time winningest coach out at Silver Lake High School, and I remember just being around him, going to his practices, and you watch how much these guys put into the program oh, yeah. and how much you do it for the kids. And every once in a while, you get a generational-type player like a Cadell Williams where you say, you know what, we're going to ride this, and, and he's special enough that – you know, we've got another shot. And to, to go back to back is tough. Lou and Christie's done it. Uh, and now with a chance to still have a pretty stacked cupboard and to come back, I know Herb Brogan who will head into his 44th season <laughs> next year. You can't be can walking that? away anytime yeah. soon now, can yeah. he? No, no. Not, not he, with the way this program's headed. Well, and then you got the offensive line. You got Luke Smith. You got Pastoriza, Salazar. You got Sweeney, Stragakos. I mean, they're special. That's what it starts, it's offensive line. Let's send it downstairs. Lexi Ayala standing by with Coach Brogan. Jackson Lumen Christie's head coach, Herb Brogan, the third winningest coach in Michigan history. How does it feel to get number 13 under your belt? Well, I mean, it feels great. Uh, we've been here before, but never been, been here before this group of kids. And to see their relation, you know, really makes it all worthwhile. As a coach, being here before, how did that help you down the stretch, keeping your kids calm in those big moments? Well, maybe they were calm. I wasn't. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, experience always helps. There's no question about that. But uh, hats off to Menominee. Uh, you know, they, they created some real problems for us where we made some bad plays uh, defensively. But, uh, uh, you know, we answered the bell when we had to. And, Coach, you're coaching alongside your two sons, Shane and Sean. How's it been throughout the years having them by your side? Well, it's been a long time since, you know, in, in the 90s when they played, you know, and then coach now. But it's, it's great. It's great to have them. Uh, they take things seriously. They, along with our entire coaching staff, just does a great job. Coach, I appreciate it. Go celebrate with your team. Thanks so much. Johnny, back to you. I appreciate it, Lexi. I remember when we were on our call with Coach Brogan this week, and I believe our producer, Chris Wazilewski, said, Coach, how long have those guys been with you? Your sons, he said. On the sidelines <laughs> or in life? <laughs> it feels like uh, it's all intertwined. You know what I mean? How cool is it to coach your sons oh and have gosh. and then have them coach with you? Yeah, I mean, it's that's, special. That's beautiful. It's special, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. They got a great thing going in Jackson, no question. Mm -hmm. Lumen Christie, the victors today. I mentioned going all the way back to 07, these two teams met as well. It was Menominee who prevailed in that one. But uh, today it is Jackson Lumen Christie, the winners here in the first of four championships that we will call. Uh, coming up next is unbeaten Mason against Forest Hills Central. I'll be on the call alongside Justin Sasante for that one. And then the late slate coming your way after that. And it's going to be a special one. Don't go anyplace. Final score from our D7 championship. Lumen Christie 34, Menominee 30. Up next, the D3 final. It is Grand Rapids, Forest Hills Central, and the Mason Bulldogs kickoff.
scheduled for 12.50. Alexi Ayala, John Wangler, and our entire crew. I'm Johnny Kane. We thank you for joining us for the first of four. Back here in about a half hour for D3 on Valley Sports Extra.